It sucks that the following I have hates me so much. I feel like I'm the most hated person on YouTube. Emmeline Reed, a girl who started her YouTube channel with one purpose. My name is Amber Lynn and I wanted to start um, a YouTube channel for weight loss. But would instead spend a decade gaining 200 pounds and deteriorating in health, all the while cultivating one of the most toxic communities on YouTube, the Emberverse. I stumbled into the Emberverse in late 2019. I was watching a video of Nikocado Avocado and Hungry Fat Chick visiting the Heart Attack Grill, and somebody mentioned Emberlyn Reed in the comment section. I looked her up and I was instantly sucked in. It wasn't Ember herself who fascinated me, but rather the obsession and the lore that surrounded her. Most of her videos had 60 to 80% dislikes. Her comment section filled with people bashing her, some going as far as buying channel memberships and paying money during live streams just to send her hateful comments. The negativity was not just limited to her channel. I counted over 71 reaction, commentary, and compilation channels that are dedicated to criticizing or mocking her. Among the top reactors are Zachary Michael, who has made 292 videos about Emberlyn, Chikara Transformations with 130 videos, Charlie Gold with 96, Michael V. Petty with 68, Willow Davis 163, O Lordy Mo Jordi, whose channel is 88% about Emberlyn Reed with 124 videos. Then Young Dumb Honey Bun, who has recently deleted most of her Emberlyn Reed videos as part of a rebrand to become a political commentator. In 2018 and 2019, reaction channels organized a convention called EmberCon, in which they sat for a cumulative total of five hours discussing Emberlyn Reed. Classic. So, <laughs> welcome to EmberCon <laughs> 2018, where only the best people are at. And if you're not here, then I feel sorry for you. But um, obviously we have some notable people here. What's, what's the name of our crew? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I do. That's a hard fader, fader, hater nation. I don't know. Ambercon 2018 <laughs> in the house. The big question then becomes why? Why are so many people dedicated to talking about this woman? The most dismissive answer would be money. Talking about Emberlyn Reed is a lucrative business. Zachary Michael and Young Dumb Honey Bun have admitted as much. She's obsessed with me. You say obsessed, I say capitalize another train wreck on the internet that doesn't want to get better. I have never been shy about saying that the reason why I upload is because I have a community of people who care about what I want to say and because it pays. I don't know if you thought I was going to be here and be like, this is out of the goodness of my heart. No, I'm collecting a paycheck for this and I'm making friends along the way. Here's my thoughts, because people love to come for me and say like, oh my God, like you're making money off of whatever, Chantel and Amberlynn being fat, X, Y, Z, whatever. And I'm just like, okay, yes, I am. Thank you. I'm glad I got the money. I'm not mad about it. Um, but also, y'all, Amberlynn, if she's telling the truth, makes 10 thousand dollars a month being garbage like right. being literal <laughs> human garbage <laughs> and right. you're mad that i'm making money off of her girl don't come for me like yes i'm gonna collect my coins because i deserve them if mm, right. amber lynn can get her coins i'm gonna get mine too sorry right. just, and I, also and I you'll get to monetize your channel soon because you right. deserve <laughs> and also, I got monetized at the beginning of July, too. But money only answers why reaction channels continue to do it. It doesn't account for why they picked Amber as a target of their criticism. And it also doesn't explain the vile comment section. They all say Amber is a slightly problematic or a downright terrible person who deserves to be criticized or hated. Um, when I call her a fat pig, it's because she is fat and she's a pig. But I'm not calling her a fat pig because of her weight. She's just a lazy, smug, manipulative pig. A greedy liar um, and a greedy, manipulative, narcissistic person. But when you jump into the Emberverse, it is very hard to understand why she gets so much hate. All you see is just a woman who sits on her couch and tells us about the latest diet she's veiled. Shows us her coloring book or Lego set. 
is a mythographic color and discover paradise. There's like hidden pictures within the picture. So this is the one I'm doing right now. It's like dolphins made out of like crystals, which is so cute. And like some of the hidden things is like a calculator or there's like a lock right here. Um, there's coffee, um, a popsicle, a bag of money, you know, stupid stuff like that. So I started this last night, actually. I have some palm trees colored. So that's all I've done, and it took me forever. Occasionally, she leaves the couch to go to Walmart or brush her hair in the bathroom or try on clothes. It all seems so innocuous. I scroll through, and it's like every comment, and I'm not even exaggerating, like every comment is horrible horrible having spent nearly four years in the emberverse i do not think her critics are a monolithic group of people who completely hate her her viewers exist on a spectrum on one extreme you have her diehard fans commonly referred to as m babies while an extreme minority these are the people who support amber no matter what she does and are quick to excuse or forgive her then next to the M babies, you have the jaded fans. These are the people who like M Berlin, but are frustrated by her lack of progress over the years. This is seen by how quickly they share supportive comments anytime Amber shows any signs of weight loss progress. Then they revert back to critical comments when she fails again. Then next to the jaded fans, you have the lol cow observers. These are people who watch Emberlyn solely because she's a train wreck. They have no emotional stakes in her outcomes. They're just there to laugh. Then finally, on the extreme end, you have the hate watchers. As the name suggests, these are people who hate Emberlyn Reed. They root for her to fail and some actively wish harm on her. This is a group that accused Ember of lying about cancer. Hello. <laughs> Uh, so I've, I've told the people who matter and who I, who I know in real life, but I just want to update you guys. Um, I've been having panic attacks. Oh, God. So I got my results, my results back, and I do have cancer. I have womb cancer. <laughs> and so it's uterine cancer. And if you want your proof, here's your proof. This 29 year old presents today for follow up after total abdominal hysterectomy, bilateral salpingo oophorectomy on July 15th, 2020. With final pathology showing stage 1B, grade 2, endometrial cancer. This video is part one of a three-part deep dive into the rise of criticism and hate against Emberlyn Reed. I will discuss the events and behaviors that cultivated each group of viewers over the years. Part 1 will be a documentation of the major scandals and serious accusations that gave rise to the hate watchers. Part 2 focuses on the criticism surrounding her weight loss journey. I will include every diet she's tried and discuss the weight trolling, gaslighting and manipulation which gave rise to the jaded fans and lol cow observers. And then finally, part three will focus on her childhood and the petty things she's been nitpicked and bullied for. Consider part three a defense of Emberlyn Reed dedicated to her M babies. Do you think people dislike you only because of rumors? I have witnessed this firsthand that yes, there is a large portion of people who dislike me based on rumors. But there are also a pretty big portion of people who dislike me because of their own reason. In this part one, I will be documenting the freeloading, animal mistreatment, inappropriate sexual behavior around minors, 
the big rape lie, abusing Becky, scamming her audience, ignorance, mean girl behavior, and inappropriate public conduct. At EmberCon, Michael B. Petty called Emberlyn a predator for always finding girlfriends to mooch off of and live with them for free. Also, I kind of wanted to talk about this too. Do we feel like Amberlyn is low-key predatory, pre- yes. like a predator? I yeah. just find it very interesting how like she's managed <laughs> to wrangle in these people and latch them herself onto them. When Amberlyn started her YouTube channel in 2013, she was dating a girl named Crystal and they were living with Crystal's parents. People in the comments started criticizing Amber for not having a job and living with her girlfriend's parents at age 23. She made a response video explaining that the reason she did not have a job was due to a lack of reliable transportation and she could not work from home because of her slow computer. I really, really, truly want a job, um, but I cannot get one because I do not have a car. I do not have a license and I do not have transportation and unfortunately where I live they do not have um, buses. I'm used to having buses and stuff like that but they don't have buses here and um, so I just kind of wanted to let you guys know that I don't not have a job because I'm lazy or because I just don't want one or anything like that. I want a job more than you'd imagine. You can ask my girlfriend, you can ask anybody. But I do not have transportation. My girlfriend doesn't have a car. I don't have a car. We do not drive. Um, the only people in this house who have a car is uh, my girlfriend's parents. But they work every single day besides on the weekends. And they use their car. They drive hours away just to work. Which, that's inspiring all in itself. But I just wanted to let you guys know that right now in my life I am not capable of getting a job because of transportation. Um, work at home jobs, I would not be able to do because the internet on my laptop is horrific and my laptop is very slow. Jobs wouldn't approve me anyways for that. Um, I've tried before and most of them you have to um, pay and my girlfriend's parents already told me that they're not willing to do that because they have seen a lot of scams with stuff like that which is totally understandable so i just kind of wanted to you know make that clear and tell you guys that um please stop telling me i should get a job despite having no job emberlyn would show off her huge jewelry and perfume collections and frequently post vlogs going to restaurants these are my rings I have a lot of rings. I'm always wearing rings. This is all of my dangly earrings. I used to have so much more, but I got rid of them. These are my stud earrings, which I am overly obsessed with. I love stud earrings. That is my favorite jewelry, besides necklaces. Later, she disclosed in a Tumblr post that she used to receive a monthly allowance from Crystal's parents. The post read, in part, I used to receive $1,400 a month from Crystal's parents for doing absolutely nothing. I used to shop all the time and go out to eat. I felt so guilty about my life in Virginia. I lived with my ex-girlfriend for almost four years without a job and I lived off of her parents and I got a lot of, a lot of beef because of that online. Prior to living with Crystal's parents, Amber was dating a partner named Casey, and they were both living with Casey's mother in Arizona. In the very first commentary video that Michael B. Petty made explaining why he hates Emberlyn Reed, he criticized her for the ingratitude she showed towards Casey's mother. Casey's mom was a single mother who had a one bedroom apartment or a one, you know, not a huge apartment, and they allowed this girl to live with them. And then you see the Facebook posts that she used to post about these people, about how ungrateful she was and how pissed she was they didn't appreciate her and da 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 da. Bitch, you'd have been homeless if it wasn't for them. That's the truth. 
you'd have been homeless or you'd have found someone else. Um, don't bite the hand that feeds you. I know you're hungry, but don't do it. At EmberCon, CXNT told a story that while Ember was living with Casey, she was given an ultimatum to get a job or go to school. Ember chose to go to college and then later dropped out to move in with Crystal. So when she said in her most recent video about her being proud of herself for going to college, first of all, her mm. Casey, Casey's mother made her go to school. Right. She said, get a job right. or go to school. So when she says she was proud of herself for that, it's like you have acknowledged that you didn't even want to go. Yes. Did she even graduate? It sounded no. to me like she did. She went she went for a year and that was it. Um someone said, Did you go to college? What for? How much are you in debt? I did go to college. I was going for my associates in criminal justice. I regret going because I was like forced to go. That's like a whole other story. Um, and I did not want to go for criminal justice, but I went, I was talked into it, and I am over $19,000 in debt, and it's hard. Casey shared that Crystal was sending Emberlyn Reed money and gifts while she was still living with her. Now, she was talking to Crystal about six or seven months before we, we broke up. No, actually, probably longer than that. Probably almost a year. Talking to her almost a year before me and her broke up. Me and Amber broke up in 2011. So while Crystal was talking, Crystal bought her so many things when we were together. So many things. I mean, the one <laughs> that stands out, because it's the most messed up one, most messed up memory, <laughs> was the freaking iPod Touch the second generation one. God, I can't believe how far they come. But anyway, that's a different story. She was on the phone with her. And, like, it, she, there was an argument starting. And I'm just like, what? Like, what the hell's wrong? So she goes outside talking to her. Comes in. Oh, I made her cry. What happened? What, what made her cry? What the hell? And she was telling me how Crystal was going to buy her an iPod Touch. And it was, the argument was over how much gigabytes it had. Seriously, she was going to buy her a pretty low gigabyte one at 4, 8. The standard gigabyte. And she got mad because Crystal asked, do you want this certain gigabyte or the 32 one, you know, the highest one? And she told Crystal... Asking me that is like asking if you want a pink purse. She was so rude about that. It wasn't just, I mean, she went off after saying the pink purse thing. She went off on this poor girl and made her cry because Crystal asked a simple question. Do you want this X amount of gigs or the highest one? And Amber was so disrespectful about it. Crystal cried. She bought her an over, it was over $200. Over $200 this girl is spending on Amber. That's not even with her yet. And she's like that. Seriously. It's like, whoa, you should just be grateful for what you're getting. Crystal broke up with Ember in April 2015. But Ember continued to live with Crystal and her parents for two and a half months. And she said she was looking for a job. While still living with Crystal, she started online dating a 20-year-old girl named Destiny. She met Destiny in person for the first time when Destiny's grandmother drove from Florida to Virginia to help Ember move out of Crystal's house into Destiny's apartment in Florida. I've had a couple people ask me, how am I getting to Florida? That is something I've never answered, so I guess I might as well answer it now. On July 2nd, Destiny is coming with her mammy. They're coming to pick me up. It's gonna be a really far drive, so the whole July 2nd, they're gonna be driving and I'm so grateful for them, like you don't even understand. Within a few days, Destiny added Ember to a bank account. What are we doing right now? Riding you onto my bank account. <laughs> Things getting serious. And for the first month and a half of the relationship with Destiny, Ember did not have a job and they lived off Destiny's salary and money they made from pawning some of their possessions. Where are we going? To a pawn shop. Why? 
because we're gonna see if we can sell my smartwatch. Destiny went to the pawn shop, sold her little thingy majigger. Now Jessica, which is our roommate, is in a different pawn shop trying to sell like a stereo PS3, I think. In the meantime, Crystal's parents were allegedly still paying for Amberlynn's phone bill. In his video, Michael B. Petty also pointed out a very tone-deaf Tumblr post that Ember made complaining about paying taxes so that other people can sit around and do nothing. One that I found interesting was when I was looking through her Tumblr was this post. I just learned a lot about life right now. Destiny pays $45 a month for people with supplementary security income. She pays $10 a month for people with Medicare, and she pays $80 a month for federal taxes. I'm going to have to pay for these things too. I'm literally in shock that we pay for people to not work. <laughs> Are you fucking for real right now? Um, I'm pretty sure you received food stamps while you were living with Casey. And I'm pretty sure that Crystal's parents pretty much paid for your existence. Um, and I recall you went to uh, a scam school when you were with Casey. And I'm pretty sure you filled out the FAFSA for that. Where do you think that money comes from? You think it falls from the sky or something in 2017 destiny broke up with amber and amber started dating a girl named becky by this stage amber was making money from a youtube channel a few months into the relationship one of becky's friends rafe did a you now live stream bashing amber for mooching off them during a trip to pride amberlyn wants it to be about her give 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 and nothing in return yeah yeah, when we went to Pride, um, all she from our house all the way to Lexington and back, she only gave us like ten bucks for gas, and we bought her water and snacks and stuff. And she was like, "Oh, it's ten enough." And Hannah just looked at me, and I was like, "Yeah, that's fine." And then the next time we stopped for gas, Becky filled up the tank. So I know she was in foster care. I understand that, but she acts like the world owes her stuff. And I just don't understand why people think it's okay to call me an animal abuser when I am the literal farthest from it. When each of the reaction channels were asked why they criticized Amber at EmberCon, Willow Davis said he's a little mean to Amber because of the quote, dark animal shit she's done. Um... It's just like, like I, it's I, I'm I'm in a weird like kind of state where it's like I I I don't want to hate anybody ever like just for being them, but mm -hmm. I can definitely I definitely want to stand up for things that I believe in mm -hmm. and like not back down and things like that. So it's like, like like I think like she's like doing a bunch of shitty stuff. I think she needs to get her life together, but like. I hope she does get it like get her like shit together. But until then, like I am, I have no problem. Like the fucking animal stuff is brutal. Mm -hmm. She does like so. Like I, I like if you want to call me like mean for that, like whatever. Like like I don't know. I feel like I feel like it's like justice. So let's go through some of the animal mistreatment accusation Amber has faced over the years. It started when Emberlyn was living with Crystal. She had a dog named Monkey, and on May 18th, 2014, Ember posted a video titled Animal Abuser? Question mark, in which she addressed comments criticizing Monkey's weight and basically said she didn't see anything wrong with the dog's obesity. A lot of people think they know about my dog when they don't. And by a lot of people, I really only mean one. <laughs> um... My dog, Monkey, is, yes, overweight, obese, but he's happy and he's healthy. Um, we've actually taken him to the vet quite a few times because before we got him, he got fixed. And the vet did say that um, our dog will be gaining weight because he did get fixed. And um, so we took him back a couple months later because he did gain about five to ten pounds and um monks why are you playing with sticks all the time you love sticks but um so we we took him and they said that it is completely normal three other animal related controversies happened during her relationship with destiny 
The first one is a widely believed story in the Emberverse that Emberlyn got rid of Destiny's cat, either by letting it run away or did something more sinister, all so that she could get herself a new kitten. I am going to present the sequence of events and you can make up your own mind. On July 2nd, Ember and Destiny moved in together. Four days later, Ember did an apartment tour and introduced Destiny's cat, Gracie Mae. I want to introduce you guys to somebody. Oh, yeah. Her name is Gracie Mae. This is Destiny's cat and now my cat. It's our little baby. Huh? 11 days after she uploaded a three-day vlog titled, We Got a Couch Plus Bad News. On day one of three, which was July 17th, she was home alone with Gracie Mae while Destiny was at work. She said Gracie ran outside, but she caught her and brought her back in. I don't want to admit this, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell y'all the truth. Earlier, I was letting Leia out, the puppy. I had the door open and I swear to God, a giant ass spider hopped into the living room. I was like, oh my God, what do I do? And Leia was already outside. I didn't have a leash on her because we're trying to teach her how to stay near us without a leash so we don't have to worry about the leash. How am I gonna get Leia? But then how am I gonna get the big ass spider that just hopped in the living room? I didn't know what to do. So I like ignored the spider for half of a second. And I hurried and grabbed Leia, and then all of a sudden, Gracie, my cat, well, Destiny's cat, but my cat now, she goes booking it outside, running like a ninja. Oh my God. I threw Leia down as fast as possible, and I ran out that door like the speed of friggin' lightning. Gracie's okay, she's in the house. Leia's okay, she's in the house. And then the next day on July 18th, she announced that Gracie had disappeared. Our cat got out last night. Not when she got out for me because I caught her and catched her. We're thinking she wanted to do it in her next opportunity and she did. We're thinking our friend Jessica didn't notice but Gracie ran away and now we're gonna try to find her. Don't be sad. We'll find her. And if we don't, I'm hoping she's in like a good place because there are people out there who take cats you find them and they'll take care of them well, she has hurt my knee water i know well look it we got our new couch what do you think of it i love our couch thread i'm making flyers for gracie for gracie gracie may we went to walmart and we printed out uh, five pictures of her, or ten pictures of her. How many more do you have to make? Four more. How are you feeling right now? Sore and upset. Where are you sore at? Right here. It hurts to even move it. There's our couch, by the way. It is so cute. I'm liking it. We're putting up the first flyer for Gracie May. And we're gonna do it next to the mailbox because I think that makes the most sense. And we have nine others to do. More bad news, everybody. For a date. I'm not sure I understand. Places for a date. <laughs> Our movie was sold out. That's never happened to me before. So now we're looking on Siri, hoping she can give us some ideas of what to do. She keeps wanting us to go to the club. She wants us to go to the club. Let's go to the club then. Get your freak on. Get your freak on. On July 19th, one day after Gracie went missing, Ember made a vlog showing a jar containing spare change labeled Wasabi Fund. And she explained the fund like this. I'm sure you guys could figure out that wasabi fund means we are getting a kitten. The reason why I call it the wasabi fund is because for years and years now, I have wanted my own cat of my own that I adopted myself. And I really, really, really wanted to name it wasabi. I did see a cat today that I really, really liked. Something just didn't seem right with it. Plus the adoption agency was taking too long to get back. And I was just like, you know what? It's just not worth it. In the next video on July 22nd she and destiny were shopping around for a new cat and they bought one and named it wasabi
How this story often gets told is that Ember and Destiny could not afford an extra cat or the apartment building wouldn't allow more than two pets. So Ember got rid of Gracie in order to be able to get a kitten. However, in December 2015, five months after getting Wasabi, Ember and Destiny got another cat named Scarlet and a dog named Twinkie Star. And a lot of you are asking about Twinkie Star. And I have not really mentioned this beautiful bundle of love, but Twinkie Star is our dog. Um, some of you thought maybe we were fostering her, which we are not. This is our dog forever and ever, and I'm super excited. She is three years old. She has all her shots. She has all her medications done. She is fixed. She is perfect as ever. Within about a month, Scarlett disappeared from the vlogs, and people were asking where she was. And Ember said they got rid of Scarlett. I wanted to answer a question that keeps floating around is where's the kitty as you guys know we got scarlet the kitten i want to say maybe a month ago or two months ago so i'm gonna answer you guys this question what happened so i'm gonna start back when i first moved here which was about seven months ago we had gracie which was destiny's cat and she was so like the sweetest little thing and then we had leia which was jessica's dog we figured okay two animals that's enough that's good that's good so that was that like i fell in love with both of the animals they're both precious as ever and then one day we woke up and gracie was gone and i'm freaking out scattering everywhere and i'm like where is gracie like what happened gracie ran away and all in that like kind of swift motion gracie ran away and our roommate moved out so we had no more pets and it was kind of sad because i love pets so we went on the hunt for a kitty and that's how we got wasabi and i am so like lucky to have him because he is the best kitty cat in the whole world and i'm just really happy so moving on wasabi was alone a lot because you know while we were at work we wanted him to have someone to play with so we were going back and forth should we get a cat or should we get a dog should we get a cat or should we get a dog so all within again the same swift motion we privately we didn't like say this in a vlog or anything really was getting a cat and a dog around the same time so we were gonna have three pets and the three pets were scarlet which was the kitten that you guys are wondering about and then twinkie the dog that we have now i'm just gonna say now scarlet and wasabi did not get along like they would constantly fight we realized that was i don't know if i mentioned this but wasabi's eye was infected which we got that fixed don't worry <laughs> wasabi's eye was infected because scarlet scratched on it they would fight a lot and we tried to break it apart we tried to get them to know each other for you know like two weeks or whatever and that's a long time like they were together for a long time and they should have adapted to each other but we felt like it was just getting worse what's amazing is twinkie and wasabi get along perfectly so it's it's kind of like it's almost like it was meant to be but the reason why we had to get rid of scarlet is because our apartment complex only allows us to have two pets i was like oh okay like cool so Obviously, we wouldn't have gotten rid of Scarlet. We would have tried to make Scarlet and Wasabi get along a little better, at least. You know, it really is sad. I think of Scarlet often, but she is living with Destiny's friend, and we would not just give Scarlet to anybody. We had to make sure that, you know, it was a nice home. The second issue that came up during the Destiny era is the way that Ember and Destiny rough handled their pets. In a video Ember posted, Destiny was seen smacking their dog, and then Ember tossed their kitten behind her. It was not an evil child. <laughs> no bite. <bias. laughs> oh, that is the authorities. Get over a little more so she's more real. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the cat if you need to, just like. But <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> Wait, what do I say again? I'm like, go of him. Jesus Christ, that was like... <laughs> no, 
baby, because the dog's back there. No, she's she's sleeping. She's okay. She's not sleeping. <laughs> hey, she's she's hey. No, down. A YouTube channel called Face Tuned uploaded a video titled Ember and Reed, the Animal Abuser, in which they included a compilation of Ember and Destiny handling their pets. The third animal controversy during the Destiny era came in November 2016. People believe Ember stole a kitten. On November 13th, she posted a video titled I'm an animal hoarder, question mark, where she was responding to backlash regarding her newest cat named Rarity. So this is about the fact that I got another kitten. People are calling me a hoarder, animal hoarder. People are saying that I'm lying about how I got her. People are just being disgusting. When she introduced Rarity a few days prior, she said her neighbor threw out a litter of kittens and she took one of the kittens and named it Rarity. So what happened was <laughs> our neighbor um, had a ton of kittens and she just threw them outside and she was like, I hope someone takes them, blah, blah, blah. And last night it was raining and it was cold and I was like, Oh my gosh, there's a little kitten outside. So I took the cat and I was like, I, trust me, ask Destiny. I was back and forth. I was like, I'm taking someone else's animal. I should not be taking someone else's animal. But it's cold outside and this cat was kind of hungry and it's shivering. And I was just like, oh my gosh, found out she's a girl. And then when I woke up today, I knocked on my neighbor's door and I was like, your kitten. She's like, I'm actually, I'm trying to get rid of her. And I was like, uh, uh, uh oh hi i'll take her um i just i don't want to see a little baby like this just out there in the cold people criticized her for leaving the rest of the cats outside but this is ember's justification you guys are wondering what happened to the other kittens yada 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 thank the lord my neighbor actually put those kittens back in her home and because she realized it was too cold outside after i got done talking to her that morning after i found the one kitten and I'm gonna let you guys know, no, I would have not taken those kittens to a shelter because everywhere around me within radius of like 50 miles, every shelter is a kill shelter. And I wanna warn you guys right now that there are shelters who will not say they're kill shelters and they are. And to me, that is worrisome. And it puts me in a rock and a hard place. Do I leave the kittens out here to become outside cats? who they might actually enjoy it or do i take them to a shelter where there's a 99.9% .9 chance they're going to get killed sometimes i just don't know what to do um and you can call animal rescue but they'll do the exact same thing i would have done or could have done taking them to the kill shelter and i did not want to do that i didn't know what to do and so that's why um when i found the little kitten it was only really her around and there was a few bigger cats who were used to being outside who love being outside So I just left them be because I'm used to them being outside cats and they're used to it and they enjoy it That's like their home in January 2017 Ember posted a video titled shitty things I did in 2016 and one of the things she confessed to was leaving her animals alone at home for extended periods of time. I would leave my poor babies home alone without me. And what I mean by that is my dog and my cats were home without me for like 12 hours, sometimes even more than that. Um, that's fucking shitty and disgusting and I hate myself for it. But I'm moving forward. I'm here with them now and I love them all so much. Then in late 2017, there was another huge drama about Ember's cat Rarity involving that woman named Rafe. On April 15th, 2017, Ember posted a video titled Bed Visit and Mini Vacation, during which she and Destiny took their cats and dog to the vet. I look really tired because I am, but I'm gonna take my babies to the vet. It's their um, yearly checkup and shots and all that stuff. So we're gonna do that. After the vet, Ember said Rarity could not be spayed because she was too young. Spaying is a surgical procedure to prevent an animal from having babies. Um, my cat Wasabi and my dog Twinkie, already, they're already fixed, but Rarity Gray, as you guys know, is not fixed. But they said Rarity's too young, which I was like really confused because Rarity's five months old. 
So that was really weird. Um, I actually have to take Rarity back in four weeks. I also have to take Twinkie back in four weeks. So I'm going to do that and then make the appointment to get Rarity fixed. But I was really shocked to hear that. I know in different states, like, getting your animal fixed at a certain age is different because Wasabi was fixed in Florida at three months. A reaction channel called CXNT posted a video titled Cat Dumpalin showing an article stating that kittens can be spayed as young as eight weeks old. In June, Ember and Rafe did a live stream together and someone asked if Rarity had been spayed yet. Ember seemed to be ignoring the question, but Rafe replied no quietly in the background. Did you get Rarity? What? Rarity Rafe fixed. Thank you, Nick Lee, for the likes. Um, what is the big, big black dog's name? Oh, Cypress is the one barking. Then in August, Amber posted a video sharing that she had moved in with Becky and her roommates, Eric and Ricky. Then explained that she gave Rarity to Rafe to watch. The most important. It is about my animals and about where I am moving slash where I have moved. So there is this big thing going on about me giving my animals away. So as you guys know, uh, my lease was up in September. I did not want to stay in that same apartment for several different reasons. I did create it to be a home, but something was off, something didn't feel right, and I knew in my heart that I needed to move. You can ask Destiny because when me and her were searching for apartments, whether they were in Florida or whether they were in Kentucky, we were always always making sure the first thing we look for is if it is pet friendly always 100 percent pet friendly bam i spent a couple months before my lease was up searching and searching and searching and searching and searching for apartments that were pet friendly for three animals i had literally no luck i then decided okay how about i rent a home so i would search houses that were pet friendly for three animals and i had no luck again i seriously could not find anywhere i wanted to move closer to becky her and i are in a relationship now and her car is not doing good so it was very hard for her to go back and forth to visit me and there were just like nowhere there were no apartments no houses no trailers i even got desperate and said i'm not saying anything's wrong with the trailer but i even got desperate and was like okay i'll rent a trailer if i have to i don't want to get rid of my animals i love them so much i couldn't find anywhere i couldn't even find anywhere that allowed two animals and i was like what the fuck like what is wrong with animals seriously as the time kept on ticking i couldn't find anywhere i didn't know what to do becky offered me to live with her and I took her up on that offer and I said, okay, I really enjoy being around Becky. I'm not saying I'm gonna live here forever because I'm not gonna live here forever. I personally do prefer living by myself because now I have two roommates, which I adore. I like them both a lot, but I like to be able to walk around naked and I can't really do that here. <laughs> the issue with here is I wasn't even allowed to have three animals here. So I was having a hard time and I was freaking out. I spent a lot of time crying. You can ask Becky. A lot of fucking time crying so no i did not give away my pets i actually asked hannah and rafe if they will watch wasabi and rarity for me i will supply litter for them cat food for them anything they need for the whole stay that they are there i will not get rid of my pets i will not and i really did not want to separate rarity and wasabi i was allowed to have two pets here so i ended up letting rafe and hannah babysit rarity that is what is happening i know it's very sad i have spent so much time crying about it i go and visit rarity as much as i can she's probably been there for a little over a week now i know a lot of you are going to be upset with me and disagree with me to make myself clear i did not get rid of rarity i did not get rid of wasabi on november 7th emma and becky posted an angry video together saying they had fetched rarity from rafe's house because rafe was secretly collecting donations online to get rarity spayed behind emma's back uh, and i know a lot of you were like okay Amberlyn, why do you have your cats now well i started receiving messages screenshots all kinds of crap about Rafe being inside of a hate group trying to get money to get Rarity fixed. I want to let you guys know that all three of my animals, Twinkie Star, Rarity Gray, and Wasabi, all are updated on shots. I have vlogged this. <laughs> Destiny knows. 
Oh, yeah, because Destiny was there. Destiny um, took her. I take care of my animals. You guys might think otherwise because you guys read these stories and come up with your own little fucking lies. I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. I'm sorry I'm so frustrated, but I just don't understand. And the reason why Rarity has not been fixed is because she was not old enough. And I'm going to be honest, and I know this is bad of me for maybe thinking this in my head, but the reason why I did not want her to get fixed while she was with Rafe is because Rafe's house is filth. I'm sorry, but it's almost slightly like what a hoarder's house looks like. You guys have seen it in my vlogs. I'm not trying to be rude, but when an animal gets surgery, I don't care if it's as small as a fucking spay, they still need to be in a clean and safe environment that isn't cluttered and gross. It's that simple. And trust me, that doesn't happen here because Eric is very particular. He's a very clean clean. person, and I'm very grateful about that. So, and not only that, even if Rafe's house was spick and span and sparkly clean, I don't want other people paying for my animals. I'm not that person. I do not ask people for money. I do everything myself besides drive. (laughs) Michael B. Petty said he was involved in encouraging Rafe to get Ember's cat spayed. So yeah, you know, and we were also a part of the whole Rafe cat fixing controversy. Right. I wasn't personally involved per se, like contacting the vet or anything, but I was definitely there to support and like encourage Rafe to like get these animals the health care that they so rightfully deserve because, you know, they're animals too and they have a right to fucking get some kind of veterinary care. In March 2018, Ember finally got Rarity Spade. So, oh my gosh, I only got like three hours of sleep last night because I have a really bad tendency to not sleep very well to begin with, but I was super, super nervous to sleep today because today's the day that Rarity is going in for surgery and she has no idea. She might be a little confused because last night at 8 p.m. I had to put up her water and her food. She wasn't allowed to eat or drink anything past 8 p.m. So in June 2018, Ember posted a video titled Animal Control Came. One of Ember's audience members had called Animal Services because Ember was overfeeding her dog Twinkie. It's just the guy said she looked fine and she looks good. During the April vet visit, Twinkie had weighed in at 16 pounds. And at the vet's office, Ember read on the dog breed guidelines that a chihuahua is supposed to weigh six pounds. But Ember said Twinkie was a different breed of chihuahua. Wait, how much did Wasabi weigh? 11. 11. Twinkie's 16 pounds. They said it was okay. Rarity is 5.1. She's chilling. She was really good for the doctor. Yeah, for sure. Look, you know what it says for great parents? Chihuahua's supposed to be six pounds, but Twinkie's not like a normal chihuahua. She's just a little bigger. There is a documented history of Emberlyn giving Twinkie too much food. We kept all Twinkie's Christmas treats. Why is there a lighter here? All of Twinkie's Christmas Random. treats. Oh Twinkie my god. Twinkie Mama got you. That is... It is a... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's too big for a chihuahua. I Maybe I'm a little too picky here. I'm sorry. It just seems like a very large treat for a chihuahua. Pumpkin and sweet potato flavor bone. Maybe I'm a hater. <laughs> I gotta figure out how to open it first. This Holly gets like a, a fucking quarter cup of food twice a day or something <laughs> ridiculous. Twinkie's gonna be going on a diet with me come January. This is definitely a honker. A honker. Twinkie's gonna be going on a diet with me come January first. That that's that's so interesting that that's the way that you're choosing to do this with your animal. <laughs> I'm gonna give her this fucking gigantic treat, but after this, she's going on a diet. Please stop projecting on the Twinkie Twink. star. Wait, be gentle. Okay. That is okay. That is huge. It's huge. It's as big as her head. I'm sorry. Ember said Twinkie ate two pounds of trash from a garbage can. Um, is Twinkie still losing weight? Right now, she's a little chunk monster because she got in the trash and she does that. Every time she gets in the trash, she gains like two pounds. And two pounds on a dog that size looks like a literal lot. Like it looks like a lot. So. I weighed her like yesterday. She was 14.8. Oh, she's skinny. 
Her it, highest weight was 17.8 pounds. They just said as long as she stays below 15, she's good. Yeah. The vet says... Because um, she's not like a teacup chihuahua. Like, she's not meant to be tiny. super tiny. But she's also, in my humble opinion, not meant to be this chunky <laughs> she just has a big appetite me and the vet already talked about it on top of the overfeeding over the years people have raised concerns about twinkie not getting enough exercise according to michael b petty amber Lynn reed used a fake facebook profile impersonating a gay black man named damon white to defend herself in hate groups one of the things damon white defended amber on was the criticism that she does not walk her dog enough and Amberlynn could not handle the fact that she had no control over what people were saying about her. So she decided to infiltrate this group. And you want to know how she did this? She did this by catfishing. Now, I would like to introduce you to someone that was pretty influential in the Amberlynn Reed discussion group. And his name is Damon White. Now, if you look at this picture, it's a gay black man. This is kind of also why I feel personally annoyed by this woman too, is because when I found, when all this went down, I was like, of course she's gonna impersonate a gay black man, of course. So this is Damon White. This was his fo uh, profile on, on uh, Facebook. Now, I was in that group. I remember being in that group. I remember communicating with this person and being like, God, this guy's fucking annoying because there were people in there that would defend her, but the way that this guy would defend her was, first of all, he was always there. He was always there. And every single comment, he was fucking there. And then he would gaslight people and then turn it around, like, every single time. Now, come to find out, this person was Amber Lynn Reed. And this is the message from the mods to the person who supplied Amber Lynn with the... Um, with the fake profile. Now, uh, you can pause it here and read it. This is pretty much all it says. And then this is a blow-up of Amberlynn Reed talking to the person, asking for the login information for Damon White. Now, so he would come into the comments and he would defend her about all kinds of shit. I was going to save this for another video because I didn't want to... Because it's a lot to dive into. I have a ton of screenshots from, about this. Um, here's another screen stop. I will admit, I love her live streams. You never know what to expect, lol, but they are usually on, uh, only an hour or two long. ALR, AL, ALRD said she she walks Twinkie now. And I guess Amber Lynn thought that AL, ALRD, ref, ref, when that was made, that group name was made, it was in reference to Amber Lynn Reed's name, but it wasn't. It was Amber Lynn Reed discussion. Like, that was whatever. Um, she walks Twinkie now, and... I want to believe her, but we live in a society where we don't believe anything unless there's proof. The the thing that if if we would, if we go back to then, there is a bunch of people who are talking about how sick and tired they were of seeing Twinkie like gaining gaining weight and not being taken care of. It's still not being taken care of. And Amberlynn would go on and on about how she walks Twinkie all the time. Amberlynn will show everything else in her fucking life, but not her walking her dog, which would be a positive thing. See that used to like we used to be like why like it's so easy to prove that wrong like all you literally have to do is you film yourself touching everything in walmart but you can't film yourself holding a leash and walking your dog i think she moved in with eric and ricky and she did that twice where she walked up and down the street twice and then and then there was that time where she was like i'm walking she had her fitbit i don't know what happened to her fitbit i think she ate it i'm not sure what happened to it that was mean at embercon cxnt mentioned twinkie possibly having untreated diabetes but i couldn't confirm where the story came from twinkie has been peeing a lot and she thinks she might have diabetes and oh, ambrose yeah. like oh yeah we should take her to the vet and this was months ago like right. if if twinkie has untreated diabetes she can go blind soon. She can have a lot of a lot of problems and it's not going to be pretty and it's not going to be vlog worthy or cute. In one of her vlogs, Twinkie's nails were so long that they were starting to curve under. And you know she loves Twinkie Star, but like she really needs to get his or her, sorry, I misgendered Twinkie Star. Sorry, Twinkie. Um, she does need to get her nails done. I mean, I can understand being hesitant about doing it, but you can always take her to a groomer and get it done. In February 2017, Michael B. Petty posted a video titled Becky's Family Comes for Amberlynn Reed, question mark, in which he read posts from Becky's sister and speculated that she was talking about Amberlynn Reed. 
One of the posts was about a person who doesn't look after their pets. Here are the Instagram posts. The first one, this is from Becky's sister. I'm going to block out her name and everything, but um, these are from Becky's sister. She writes, um, when you, and <laughs> Michael going to be reading, all right? And when you have pets, and she posted this meme and it says, a, drug trust, a dog trusts you with his life. You're his whole world. Never abuse that trust. And then her comment is, and when you have pets slash pets that they are yours, not anyone else's, you take care of them, you take them to potty, you feed them, you clean up after them, you don't make someone else do it, and then sit there talking about how good of a mommy you are to your fur babies. It's disgusting. Now, do we know for sure if she's talking about Amberlyn, no, we don't. But judging by the language in the post, talking about they're yours, um, clean up to clean, clean up to them. Um, don't go around talking about how good of a mommy you are to your fur babies. That sounds to me like that is pointed at a particular person, and I doubt that there is someone else in Becky's sister's life that goes around touting how great of a fur mommy they are to their fur babies. Amber calling her children her fur babies and her being a mommy and da 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 and how vocal and public she is about how doubting, she, what a doting fur mommy she is. I mean, that is very Amber Lynn. And we know from the past that Amber Lynn doesn't do anything. We know that she couldn't even be bothered to get out of bed to let Twinkie out to go to the bathroom. We have vlog footage of Becky doing that. We know in the past that it was Destiny who had to take care of the cat. She changed the litter boxes. She did all of that stuff. We, Amber doesn't do any of that because Amber's fucking lazy. She likes to like claim to be this amazing person, but doesn't do anything to back it up. So that has been a consistent pattern of behavior for Amberlyn Reed. So I 100% believe that this is in fact pointed towards Amberlyn Reed. On December 9th, 2019, Amber started a vlog by telling her audience that her dog Twinkie was looking sick but they could not take her to a vet because it was a Sunday and they did not have a 24 seven vet near them. Today has been kind of a hard morning at the beginning because I noticed Twinkie was acting different last night and it was just like little tiny things. Like usually when I come home, she'll like jump on me. Um, she likes to jump on the couch and jump onto our bed and stuff like that. And I realized she wasn't doing those things and what got me really worried is you guys know how um, my bed is on the floor. Twinkie wouldn't even jump on that. She went up it like super slow. And then once she got on the bed, she couldn't really walk. And I literally sat there bawling my eyes out because she was in so much pain that she was shaking. So we don't really have like any 24 hour vet places, which is kind of dumb in my opinion because you never know what's going to happen at freaking 3 a.m so tomorrow since it's monday i need to call a vet and it's like an emergency because twinkie's in horrible pain i don't know if it's like her joints i don't know if she like while we weren't home she like jumped off the couch wrong or like anything could be happening and i'm like terrified because like seeing her in pain i've cried too much about it <laughs> But I'm just like really worried and I hope there's something that the vet could say to make me feel better. Later the same day, Amber went to Walmart to buy Twinkie some treats to relieve joint pain and then immediately drove to a Chili's restaurant. That's the one. I don't know. I'm just going to get it. Okay. And I'm also going to get Twinkie some treats, some joint pain treats or whatever that helps with her joints. I don't even know. Oh, there they are. So I decided not to get the um, pillows, but this is what I was talking about. It's hip and joint peanut butter flavor. It helps with the hip, hips and joints, I guess. It helps support them. I don't know. Oh, what is that? It says it's liquid and it's pot roast flavor. It says easier than pills or chews. Helps relieve occasional stiffness. Guaranteed in two weeks. <laughs> save money at the bit. Becky. But I feel like, um... Can you put it in their water? Can you put it in the, on their food? See, the oh, thing I is, I don't know if her, it's her joints. I don't know if it's her hips. Um, I'm trying to, like, slowly wait. massage them and see, like... And then wait until you go to the bed. Yeah. Like, oh. I'm worried, though. Like, I, I can't... Like I felt so bad leaving her. Our new little restaurant, Chili's. How'd you like the chips and salsa? 
Yeah, we ate them. Ate them real good. This pissed Michael B. Petty off. And he looked up the distance from the Chili's restaurant to a 24-7 vet. Oh, but we're going to go out to eat now, too? Oh, okay. Okay. Look, look at the people around. Like They're like, look at these fucking people. I can't. Yeah. Where are they at? Restaurant, Chili's. How'd They're you like at Chili's. Oh, you know what? You know what? I'm going to do something I never do. Let's see. Let's see Chili's. No, 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 no. 24-7 vet in Somerset, Kentucky. Okay. This seems promising. The hours, okay. Oh, we need to go to, like, the website. So, about us. Locations and hours. Hours of operation, blah, blah, blah. After hours emergencies. During office hours, call the regular clinic. And be prepared to dial extension number 30. After hours, the on-call emergency veterinarian can be reached. After hours, emergency fees will apply if your pet must be seen. So it seems to me like it's possible to get your vet, your pet into a vet after hours. Now, let's see. We're going to put this in. Directions. Let's see. Let's see where the Chili's is. Chili's. Somerset, Kentucky. So... The Chili's is a six minute drive to the hospital. I'm so, you know, dude, <laughs> I can't. The things that take priorities in this woman's life are astounding to me. I'm not gonna buy this whole, we're worried sick, we'll go beyond, I'm the best, best firm. On oh, it's even on the same fucking road. Shocker. Um, I'm not, you know what? I don't know why I'm surprised. I don't know why I'm surprised. I don't know why I'm surprised in the slightest. Ember later provided an update on Twinkie's condition and thanked Michael. To the people who really do care about Twinkie and cared about her well-being, she is doing amazing. Like, I am, ugh, I was really scared. And it's just good to see that it was probably just like a tiny pulled muscle or something. But the minute it starts happening again, I do want to say thank you to the people who actually showed me that there's a 24-hour vet hospital. In his series about Emberlyn Reed, Mr. Snowflake highlighted several instances of Ember being sexually inappropriate around minors. In 2015, she and Destiny were both in their 20s and had a 15-year-old friend named Libby. People found this friendship inappropriate. By one particular person saying that Libby hanging out with us is like too straight guys hanging out with a 15 year old i'm like what her mature level is pretty high and i had no idea she was 15. like sometimes age does not matter like please try not to judge things you don't know or don't understand mr snowflake did a compilation of ember and destiny graphically talking about sex in front of libby and sometimes kissing and touching each other right next to her and the last question i'm going to answer is how do lesbians have sex to the person who asked that question, you're funny. Because, I mean, <laughs> should I really answer? These are the things that lesbian couples can do if they wanted to. There is cis which I'm sure you guys know what that is. <laughs> there, you can fan uh, rub the There is oral then there's also this clip that Ember left in one of her videos where Destiny said Ember wants to be a profile towards a 15-year-old TV character. We just watched some Roseanne. True that. Did you like the episode? Yeah, it was good. Tell them what you think of Darlene. She's bae. <laughs> I love Darlene. <clears throat> she said she'd be a pedophile towards Darlene. Darlene is 50. But more concerning is this clip during her relationship with Becky. She was hanging out with Becky's friends and they were talking about how many times a day they think about sex. Right in front of a child who did not look older than 10 years. <laughs> I mean, how often do you think about sex during the day? Oh, Probably about five or six times. You do? Yeah. What about you? Sometimes. Sometimes. That's what about you? I don't want to answer that. What about you? I'm not gonna lie. It's all damn time. 
<laughs> me, I want to say about yeah, five or six seems about right. I have a husband <laughs> with an extremely high sex drive. What? I think about it all the time. You think I think about it all the time? So you let me know. <laughs> I sure do. You know what I'm saying? Speaking up by Amber Lynn Reed. R-A-P-E, rain and petals eavesdrop. I used the wrong word. Rain and petals eavesdrop. I used the wrong word. The next thing I want to talk about is the rape lie. The rape lie was probably the turning point in Amber Lynn's YouTube career. To go from kind of a troll to a full-blown troll. That rape lie was one of the most insidious, disgusting, slanderous things I think I've seen on YouTube. Okay, it is now time to talk about the accusation that Amber Lynn Reed lied about rape. In 2016, Amber posted two videos that would define her YouTube career. First, in August, she posted a video titled Confessing Everything I've Lied About. In this video, she confessed to eight lies. She had lied about her aunt disowning her for being fat. She lied about Destiny's mom being sick. She lied about her gaining weight. She lied about having a full-time job. She lied that Destiny had not gained any weight. She lied about her YouTube income. She lied about having high blood pressure and severe mobility issues stemming from her weight gain. I'm not a liar. I was protecting my feelings as much as I could. This video destroyed Amber Lynn's credibility with her audience and cemented her as a pathological liar, which impacted the reception of a video that she posted about a month later, opening up about sexual assault during her relationship with Casey. This is a video Michael B. Petty frequently references for why he hates Amber Lynn Reed. I am going to first play Amber's side of the story, then a clip of Michael B. Petty's interpretation of the video as he himself has been a victim of sexual assault. Then I am going to play the response from Casey. Then we can talk about the other pieces from Casey's response that Michael B. Petty used to make up his mind that Amber was lying. And I want to say... We've been together for about three years now at this point, and I feel myself slowly, I stopped being like sexually attracted to her. I loved her though. I know that. I don't know if it was like a best friend thing, but I stopped just feeling that like connection, I guess. So when it came to intimacy, I want to say about a little bit after like two years of being together, it started to dwindle. It was definitely my fault. This is when things got really bad. Um, ugh. I don't even know how to share this, but I'm going to have to. Um, Destiny knows all about this, by the way. Like, it's something, like, I really needed to let her know about me. Um, okay, so Cassidy was very sexually strived. Like, is that even a thing? I don't know. She really thought I was attractive. She really was sexually attracted to me and she always wanted to like have sex. And I stopped feeling that for her. Like I didn't tell her that. I would just like make up things like, oh, I don't feel good or, oh, I'm on my period. Like even though I wasn't. And just little things like that. And it made her fucking pissed. Um, when you say no to someone, whether you've been with them for like a month or whether you've been been with them for like six years, if you say no to a sexual act, your partner should accept that. That is where I firmly stand. But she didn't. And she would literally sit there and beg me. At first it was like cute little begs, like, oh, come on, baby, whatever. But then as time gradually went on, it became, you're gonna fucking touch me whether you like it or not. And I was like, you can't force me. And little did I know she can. Um, that's when she started punching me a lot. She would she would aim for my belly. Um, I don't think she ever actually hit me in the face. Her favorite spot was my stomach. She would punch me really hard in my stomach. She'd punch me like around right here a lot. She'd punch me on my arms. And she would continuously do it until I agreed to make love to her or have sex, whatever you want to consider it. 
Um, so not only was I being physically abused, but I was pretty much being like raped. That is what I consider it because I continuously would say no to her. This is what Michael B. Petty had to say about Ember's body language in the video. And it's very evident throughout that entire video that she's just making it up. You constantly see her looking to the side, trying to remember or recall what's happening. She's, I mean, as someone who has been the victim of a sexual assault, I, it really turned my stomach. Then Casey responded shortly after Ember's video, basically denying the sexual assault accusation. And then in turn, accused Ember of being physically abusive. That she's calling me an abuser and a rapist. That got my blood boiling. Because that's not true. 100% not true. It hurt a lot. Everything in that video was such bull that I can't even, I can't even describe the bullshit that was in that video. Can't even. Now, the time we were dating, I was, when we start da started dating, I should say, I was 15 years old. 15 when we met. She's two years older than me. We were together from the time I was 15 to the time I was 18 years old. I don't want to say I regretted it, but the things that happened afterwards, I kind of regretted our whole entire relationship. And I hate to say it, but I do regret our whole entire relationship. I do. So it was probably three months, three, four months after we started living together. We were up one night. I was watching something on TV, a music video, I believe. And uh, I don't remember why we argued. I don't. I don't remember the argument. But she grabbed my arm with her nails. First time. Any physical that was negative. And I remember that clearly. It shocked me. It shocked me really, really bad. And it was just, I, I didn't know what to make of it, really. I'm 16 years old. I didn't know what, I mean, I knew what physical abuse was, but not really. So, I mean, I was a kid. I was a child. So I just assumed, okay, I made her mad. I mean, when, my, when I would get my mom mad, she'd spank me or she'd like, you know, you know, get my ear or like, you know, the things a mom would do, a dad would do, you know, behave, you know. But the, so that shocked me. But it, nothing really happened a little while after that. Now, the places she said about being hit, those were on me. Those were the exact places she hit me. I was the one being abused. And I will say this, I may I may have laid a hand on her a few times. That was in self-defense. I didn't do it, and I damn well did not rape her. I did not rape her. Period. One time, when my mom and Dave were out, I don't know why we argued. But I was put on the bed. She wailed on me. Beat me real bad. I remember this clear as day. There was, our bed was in the living room. Next to the bed was a dresser. In front of the dresser was a table. Between the table and the bed was her over me, wailing on me. Did I fight back? Nope, not that time. Why? Because she kept calling me an abuser. So I just took it. I took it. Then she took off outside to the bus stop. And I just laid there. Like, what just freaking happened? What just happened? I didn't even know. At that point, I was 17 years old. Michael said he believed Casey over Amber. Now, I find Casey's rebuttal to be far more plausible, in part because... Casey actually had some evidence to back it up. 
Now, Casey showed us some screenshots and stuff that Amber had sent to him through the years after their relationship ended and she had moved to Virginia and then to Florida. Um, in the screenshots, you hear, you see Casey talking to her and being like, why are you friend requesting my friends? That's really odd. Amber's like, well, these people were a part of my life and I just want to like see what they're up to. And Casey's like, uh, you didn't even like each other, bitch. Like, bye bye Like, why are you doing this? Why are you requesting to be friends with my mom? And the last thing that Casey shows us is this final message from Amberlynn. Well, this isn't their final message, but it's them. This is a message before the rape video came out and it's Amberlynn and it says, I know I know this is probably weird, but I really need to talk about this. So you're still the only person I've let touch me. I never even let Crystal even after all the time we were together. I was too scared, too self-conscious, etc. I really want Destiny, the girl I'm going to be with, to be the next person I allow to do that to me. I'm scared though. Like what do I do? I feel like I smell bad when you did it to me. I shower every day now, so I'm different than I used to be, but it still worries the shit out of me. Again, I know this is so weird. You're the first person I trust to talk about this, though. Actually, the only person. So, but another thing that I find very interesting about this is, is that she claims that this person did one of the most unspeakable things that you could do to another person to her. And you're gonna go and ask for sex advice after the fact and the fact that she made that video knowing good and well that she had sent these messages to Casey is super problematic. So here are the messages that Emberlyn sent to Casey after he posted his response video. The first one reads, you know that you are lying in that video. No one knew who you were. No one knew who I was talking about in that video. I'm not sure why you'd post a video about that. And then it looks like Ember tried to call Casey. And then I'm not sure if Casey responded, but the next screenshot is, I wasn't putting you on blast. I didn't want anyone knowing who you were. And then that's followed up by a message. I deleted the video I made. I did not make it to attack you. I made it to share my story. You know what you put me through, Cassidy. Julia knows, Crystal knows, Destiny knows. Even your mom knows, but she'll never admit it. Family sticks together, right? Anyways, the video is down because that's a moment in my life that I'll never forget. You might have regretted our relationship, but I don't. I sure as hell am affected by the shit you did to me, but you can't go back and change any of it. I just wish you luck and really hope you'll start admitting to the lies you're throwing everywhere. It's disgusting. Then at Embercon, Michael also used a comment from Damon White, the fake account that Ember allegedly used. It's a well, lot as of Damon White, there, yeah. she came in saying that she didn't think that lesbians could rape each other. So I don't... Wait, no way. Yeah. I forgot about that. Okay, yeah. well, that just blows everything out of the water. Oh, Fuck, that. Fuck that. Fuck that shit. Fuck that. therapy. So as Damon White in the Discord, I was there because I was talking to her about this shit. And she says, um, maybe it wasn't rape because she doesn't think that a lesbian can rape another lesbian. And I was like, the fuck? Like, what the, what fuck? the fuck? And then at the I'm time, I didn't, she didn't know blame it was that Amber on Lynn. the friend. <laughs> I know, right? I didn't know it was Amber Lynn at that time. So I was like, dude, you're out of your fucking mind. Like, I don't know what the fuck you're on right now. Damon, come on. <laughs> Still at EmberCon, CXNT shared that Ember later corrected the record by saying she was sexually coerced. And the next question was like, um, but you lied about rape, you lied about Casey, et cetera, et cetera, not et cetera, just saying. <laughs> and, um, she was like, I should have used the word coerced. That would be more appropriate. And it's like, well, you should have really, really thought about that before you made that video. It is important to note that sexual coercion is a form of sexual crime in which consent is obtained by pressuring or threatening the victim. Much like a lot of sexual assault cases, there isn't really a lot of evidence proving that either Amber or Casey lied. However, the internet jury sided with Casey, thanks mostly to Amber's reputation as a liar and Michael B. Petty's standards of how a sexual assault victim should act, but only she and Casey will ever know what truly happened. And just for good measure, in November 2016, Amber also got embroiled in a political scandal. She went on a rant about her hatred for Donald Trump 
and her dislike of Hillary Clinton. She said she did not vote and then lectured people that it was disingenuous to vote for Hillary only because they disliked Trump. She asserted that it was better not to vote if one likes neither of the candidates. They all know that I am was not for Trump in the slightest. I'm actually for Bernie Sanders. Hello, Bernie. And it seems like every single person that I meet is for Bernie Sanders, yet Bernie Sanders didn't win, wasn't even part of it like it breaks my heart anyways um so i am 110 percent not for trump in the slightest and i did not vote if you guys are wondering about that i did not vote and the reason is because i'm 100 percent biased and i feel like you really need to vote when you vote you really need to vote for the person you want to be president um a lot of people voted for Hillary because they did not want Trump to be president. President, that was me. That was that. That's probably what I would have done, is vote for Hillary just because I don't want Trump to be president. But that's that's not right in my opinion. I feel like you need to vote for Hillary because you want her to be president, or vote for Trump because you want him to be president. Um, and I was biased because I feel like Trump is absolutely disgustingly rude cruel foul after receiving backlash for telling people not to vote she made a response video where she condemned the people who were protesting donald trump's victory and burning the american flag freaking annoying me is people saying that i should have no opinion i should have no right to express my opinion because i didn't vote that to me is absolutely cowardly because for one just because i did not vote does not mean donald trump is not my president just as much as he's yours it just it doesn't make sense um i think it's cowardly and pretty immature and a complete waste of a vote if people go and vote but they're sitting there voting for spongebob they're voting for the gorilla that got shot rest in peace we all love him but that's a waste of a vote voting for michael jackson voting for yourself people do these things have done these things and they did these things this year but yet i'm getting bitched at because i didn't go waste my time voting and i know so many people are gonna get upset because i said waste my time yes waste my time because then in that moment people do change their mind i will get to that part then in that moment i did not want to vote for either hillary and i did not want to vote for trump things have been said things have been done this world is in an outroar and i am just over here like i'm over here making youtube videos expressing my hatred for donald when people are burning the damn flag people are doing more gay hate crimes than there have been in i can't even tell you how long like, this is not okay. If you have an opinion, express it. But abuse should not be happening. Burning the American flag should not be happening. That is downright disgusting. I will never stand by that in a million freaking years. And I'm just over here like, what is actually happening? She concluded by saying that she would have preferred if Ellen DeGeneres became president. There's nothing we could do. We cannot turn back. We can't keep Obama as president. We can't have Ellen DeGeneres as president, which she should be the only celebrity allowed to be president, in my opinion, because she's bae. I love her. Like, I don't mean to be like, lack of better words, but calling her bae, but it's the truth. And we all love her. Like, there isn't a single person who doesn't. These political rants added to a treasure trove of ignorant things that Ember was already being criticized for. Now, I did try to come out to her as transgender before and she just did not have it she was mad about it i remember that because when i tried to tell my other ex i mean that didn't go over so well neither but i didn't know how to word it so when i went to go tell my fiance i was scared to death why because of the way amber acted when i tried to tell her the ex-girlfriend that she accused of sexually assaulting her had actually transitioned into a man by 2016. But Ember continued referring to him as a she and used his dead name, Cassidy. My first like live-in relationship was with a girl named Cassidy. I feel very um, 
strongly about this and I feel like it's okay for me to say her name because she's transgender now so she's not Cassidy no longer so I'm able to say her name because she's a once was person like Cassidy is no longer here anymore obviously I'm not gonna say his new name because we're talking about her transgender talk is too confusing so we're just gonna leave it as that this raised the accusations that emba is transphobic the thing that pisses me off and i know i have a whole live stream about this as well but like her continued like transphobia and yeah. and like nonsense related to trans people really actually infuriates me because like, don't sit here and, like, try to pull in all depths of, like, the LGBT community and say, like, oh, come watch my channel. I'm a lesbian. I'm a good ally. I love everybody. I can't be arsed to go to fucking Pride, but I'm a great lesbian. Um, mm -hmm. and, then, and then, like, say all these, like, rude-ass things about Casey. Casey like, yeah. continuing, like, acknowledging that you're going to continue dead naming Casey. Continuing and misgendering. Wrong pronouns, misgendering. Yeah. And then two days later get on your Instagram from your bed and talk about how you're mad because some random commenter thought that Twinkie was a boy dog instead yeah. of a girl dog. Like, yeah. girl, get the out of here. The biggest Emmeline Reed reaction channel today is Zachary Michael. He is a proud gay man who holds progressive values and over the years has spoken out against bigotry. So it is unsurprising that one of the very first issues he ever raised about Emmeline was her tendency to say insensitive or offensive things about minority groups. Specifically, in the very first video he ever mentioned Emberlyn Reed on his channel, he said he was a fan of Emberlyn and liked her for being openly and proudly lesbian. Then he pointed out that she showed signs of biphobia, which is prejudice against bisexual people. So, yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Like, Amberlynn Reed, I love her, but she, also, like, an example um, of a fault is, like, I love her because she's, like, unabashedly a lesbian, but she's also, like, a femme lesbian, but she's also, like, a plus-size lesbian, um, and, and, like, her life surrounding her love life and dating, like, y'all, if you don't know Amberlynn Reed, please... I mean, do go subscribe to her. She's problematic, but go subscribe. I'll try to remember to link down below. But I just, like, live for her videos. I wish she would post a little more often, especially because this is, like, supposedly the job that she does now. But, um... But, yeah, I, I just, like, am obsessed with her. But she was on You Now a couple days ago, and I was just, like, so tired... I had a long day at work and I got on and I was just like chatting with her. I asked a bunch of like silly questions like what's your ideal um, Texas Roadhouse meal? Um, and she answered it finally and I was just like, yes, slay mama, yes, come on Amberlynn. Um, but then somebody, not me, somebody else said like, Amberlynn, like, would you ever date a bisexual girl? And this is the part where she's problematic because she's like, um, let me think about that. And you could tell she was really trying to contemplate, like, how do I not be offensive? How do I not, like, make people mad? But then she says, nah, y'all, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> and she's like, I don't, like, I don't think I could ever date a woman who is bisexual. Like, it's just not me. And then people are like, oh my god, why, 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 why? Like, all the comments on the side. If you've never been on you now, it's like, all on, like, the side. I'll try to even link to that and maybe I can, I don't know. I don't know if you can link to you now. And I don't think she, like, saves those videos to her, um, to, like, her YouTube channel. But anyways, like, all the comments on the side are like, why, 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 how, how, how? Um, and she's like, well, I don't know. Like, I just, like... I mean this, like, not offensively, but, like, I just don't trust that, like, they're not gonna leave me for a man. Like, I've dated bisexual women before and they left me for men. And so I was just like, oh, Amber Lynn, girl, the listen, maybe, okay, so maybe those bisexual women that you did did that. But one, that's not, like, that's not every bisexual person's gig, right? Like, if they are leaving you or cheating on you or something like that, then that makes them shitty people. You can't, like, 
that they're just shitty people. Emberlin has also been accused of being racially insensitive. Like the whole N-word thing, which is disgusting. And like, I would have dragged her. It was years ago. Otherwise, I would have dragged her on that. But Amberlynn Reed blatantly says things without thinking. And she says it without thinking because she does not care to empathize with the feelings of the people around her or the people that she is affecting. And that is why I have a problem with Amberlynn Reed. There are three instances that people reference for this accusation. First, she posted a vlog in which she included a clip of Destiny saying the N word. Jesus Christ is my <laughs> Destiny used the n-word in a video. No one who watched it actually thought this meant Destiny was a racist. She just got overexcited and for some reason thought it would be funny to say on camera. Just that classic Destiny humour. <laughs> But the thing that got people the most annoyed was the fact that Amber had to watch the video back, upload it to YouTube, and keep that part in. It upset her fans, and Amber felt awful. Amber used the classic, I can't be racist, I have black family members. But the damage was already done, and she lost many of her fans who had stuck by her through everything so far. Again, many didn't feel as if this meant Amber herself was racist, it just showed a lack of awareness, immaturity, and ignorance. Then this clip of her calling herself a blackie. Black, black. Oh, when did I become such a blackie? Don't say that. Wait, what do you mean? That doesn't sound good. It's like emo. And finally, this Tumblr post that Michael B. Petty and Charlie Gold brought up. I don't, shouldn't even really be that surprised. I shouldn't be that surprised that Amberlynn is that ignorant. Because on her Tumblr, she did post this. Whenever I tell someone I drink diet soda, they always say it's worse for me than regular soda. Um, no nigga. I'd rather not have all the damn sugar in my body from one soda. So, on top of being transphobic, you're also, you're also casually racist. And <laughs> I don't know why you would post that on Tumblr. I don't know why you would put that to a feed. I mean, obviously, you got three notes on it. I don't know how many likes you got on it. Not much, because no one gave a fuck. But to post, to put that out there, like, come on. Like, have more decency, more cognitive of, like, what you're putting out there. As a black person, I don't even say the N-word. I try not to say it. I It really bothers me. It bothers me when I'm around my other black friends and they say it. I just don't like the word, because in my world, there's no, there, black people aren't the N-word. They're just not. That was a word that was placed on us to help define when our, eth when our ethnic background is acting a certain way. And I think it's really unfair that there's certain small demographics of people, especially in America, that get referred to as these discriminatory words whenever we're not acting proper, we're not acting right. She and her roommates have also been accused of tokenizing people of color. In that video, they go into this weird diatribe about how they want to have friends because of the way that they look. And it really fucking bothered me. Like, Bricky's like, I want to have a black friend so I can say I have a black friend. And da 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 da, da. The and like and then Becky's like, Yeah, I had this friend in high school and I called her my Latina friend. A bitch better not. If I find out that any of my fucking friends are out here being like, Oh yeah, that's black, Michael, I'd lose my fucking mind. I'd show up at your house, cut your fucking tires. Like it's fuck that's crazy to me. And they sat there and they didn't they didn't they didn't think anything of it, which really got to me too, because it's like, they're gay. So they would know what it's kind of like to be pigeonholed as just being a gay friend. Like that fucking sucks. Like, I don't want to be the gay friend. I just want to be your fucking friend. I want to be me. I want to, you know, like, uh, it really got to me. In June, 2020, Ember posted a generally well-received video expressing her support for the Black Lives Matter movement. But there was a comment that criticized Ember for promoting white guilt. People change people grow and I'm one of them to think once a few years ago I said all lives matter because I wanted to protect all races saddens me I lacked the knowledge of what black lives matter meant because I thought everyone mattered I wanted everyone to be equal including black people so by saying all lives matter not only was I ignorant I mad at myself for that point in my life no one is saying that anyone's life is more valued than the rest 
Black Lives Matter is a movement created to make people realize that racist and prejudiced people make it harder for them to live. They are constantly living in fear and not getting the same opportunities that white people have. All lives do matter, but black lives need to matter too. We need to do better as a country. Emba also had to issue an apology after she went on a rant and said the Bible is bullshit. So in one of my videos recently, I was kind of just talking about how, oh, that's cute. I have a hair that's not in the right place. I was kind of just talking about how I don't believe in the Bible. I might have caused some ruckus because I have offended some people by saying that and saying how I believe the Bible is bullshit. And I'm just like, I'm here to like apologize because I didn't want to offend people. I'm just a very blunt and raw person like I'm not just like that on YouTube like I'm like that in person and I don't ever mean to come off like as a rude person and I'm sorry if I offended anybody it's just sometimes my opinions are very strong I'm willing to accept other people's opinions though like a lot of people left in the comments like how would you feel if we called your beliefs bullshit and I don't really have beliefs like I believe in aliens like and if someone was gonna come up to me and say that that was bullshit I would accept that I don't know like, I think maybe it's because I don't get offended with people's opinions. I more so get offended with just cruelty, and I was not meaning to be cruel or anything. Over the years, Amber has shared her support for many conspiracy theories. I want to talk about three conspiracies that uh, I, I Conspiracy Len is maybe... I don't know. I, I Probably not my least favorite Len, but certainly not my favorite. The most recent one is from 2022, where she theorized that the music legend Stevie Wonder is not blind. Zachary Michael called Ember out for invalidating somebody's disability when in the past she accused him of being ableist. So the last one is I thoroughly believe that Stevie Wonder is not blind. <laughs> Look at this clip. Okay. Will you shut the fuck up? I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this literally is so fitting that this happened in this video because literally yesterday at my Twitch stream I was talking about just like feeling depressed. I do have like I've been diagnosed with major depression in the past and I also have generalized anxiety disorder and I was just talking about how yesterday like sometimes when you're depressed you just wake up depressed and like there's no rhyme or reason for it and somebody tried to discredit that by saying like well are you sure you're not just having a bad day? And this is a thing that people with disabilities in general, across the a huge, large, wide spectrum of disability, that people are frequently questioning if people's disabilities are real or if like they're just like faking it, things like that. And and I was like rightfully frustrated with that conversation yesterday. But it's just so wild to me that she's out here questioning a man's disability who's been in a public space, public platform for so long. You really think this man for his entire career could really fake a disability? Are you kidding me? On top of this, not even to mention that this is a woman who's gotten mad that people have criticize and rightfully so she's gotten mad that people have suggested that she was lying about her own health experiences that people think she's lying about her having cancer she's rightfully upset about that but just consider the fact that you were upset about that and now you're questioning this man's real life disability are you absolutely fucking kidding me right now I honestly cannot list all the ignorant things that Ember has been called out for in her YouTube career Okay, maybe in passing, I will mention that Michael B. Petty got annoyed with Ember for saying that she would sit next to Rosa Parks in a bus. It's weird to think about, but it's 100% true that Amber Lynn Reed is a mean girl. She's like a high school mean girl. So here are some of Ember's Regina George moments. In one of the messages between her and Casey, she called Casey's friend Alex ugly. Casey also showed a message between the pair which read, So I just got a text from my mom and Alex that you sent them friend requests. Yes, they were big parts of my life at one point. You were convinced me and Alex when we were together, but Alex, you both never got along. What? I never ever thought that about you two. We argued all the time when I hung out with her. 
and yes you did, you brought it up a good amount of time. You have these weird accusations constantly about things that happened when we were dating that never even happened. I never thought you and Alex had sex. Alex is ugly, no offense. In 2019, Becky's mother Norma was diagnosed with breast cancer and had to undergo surgery. Norma's friend released a number of voice notes between Amber and Norma. According to the friend, Amber contacted Norma right after surgery to call her ungrateful. I'm tired of not being appreciated when I try to help you the best that I can. And it's just frustrating. This whole this situation is Amber Lynn super frustrating. To Becky's mom and I right find after she had her surgery. I'm going to put it out there how the Amber Lynn really treated Becky's mom. Don't let her fool everyone, please. I am not trying to argue with you. That is the last thing I want to do since you just got out of surgery. I don't want to cause any more stress onto you, onto Becky, onto anyone in your family, onto myself, because that's just not going to fix anything. I am just tired of the added drama onto my YouTube and I'm tired of not being appreciated when I try to help you the best that I can. And it's just frustrating. This whole situation is super frustrating. And I finally just kind of wanted to speak upon the situation. So she wanted to speak on a situation that became about her when Norma had just got out of surgery. I will release more. When we were Facebook friends, I have left comments on your Facebook regarding your cancer. I have asked how you're doing. I have been there in that sense. And, you know, we don't have to really go down the line of, oh, you didn't message me, you didn't message me, because I can say the same about you, where not once have you thanked me personally for the money I was going to give you, for the video I made, you heard for that. the backlash I'm getting, you. for sticking up for you. Not once did you say sorry for any of the things that you have brought to my channel that is in a negative light. We'll talk in more detail about the preceding events to these voice notes when we discuss the GoFundMe. In 2016, she posted a video talking about how she was judging a woman who was bigger than her for eating at a restaurant. And I feel like people around me are hardcore judging me. And the reason why this is like on my mind right now, this is going to sound horrible of me to even want to admit. I'm sorry I keep playing with my hair. It's because I'm just like, I'm feeling like all kinds of like frantic because of this. Um, we went into Texas Roadhouse today and... When we went to go sit down, there was this girl who, you know, to me, looked like she was maybe, like, 50 pounds bigger than me. I can't really say I asked Destiny. Like, I have this, like, crazy thing where if I see someone that's, like, really morbidly obese like I am, I'll literally ask whoever I'm with, hey, is that person bigger than me? I don't know why. It's sickening. I don't know why I do it. I don't know if it's because I want to feel better about myself or I want to understand how other people visually see me. I really don't know what it is. And I asked Destiny, she's like, I don't know. I'm really looking at her I'm like oh that helps but to me she looked like she was about 50 pounds bigger than I was either way we were both like super huge in the restaurant and she was also sitting at a table with her like chunky friend and I couldn't help but almost like judge this morbidly obese girl like I am morbidly obese and I'm worried about other people judging me but yet, I am sitting there almost like judging this girl, like... I wouldn't say I was like judging her like, oh my god, this big girl's in a restaurant. I was more so looking at her thinking, I'm so sad for her. Like, I'm sad that she's, she's obese. And I noticed how other people stared at her, yet I never noticed how people stare at me. And it's like, it really opened my eyes, like, do people look at me that way too and I just don't notice it? But I noticed it was somebody else. 
Like, does that even make sense? Like, I was just... It was like a whole thing. And then I really almost didn't even want to sit there because I felt like we were going to draw attention because it's two really big girls. And I don't know. Like, I was feeling really odd when we first got there. And I didn't tell Destiny, obviously. I didn't, like, share those emotions because I don't expect anyone to understand how I feel. And it's like... When the girl stood up to leave, I hadn't even gotten my food yet. And it's like, I couldn't stop staring at her. Like, all I could think about is like, I'm so sad for her. Like, why is she eating out? I did think that at one point. Like, what the In 2022, in a Q&A, Amber mocked someone for not being able to afford food. In on her Q&A app a couple months ago, someone asked her to spill some tea about people anonymously. And she said, Person three, not actually losing weight because they're trying, but losing weight because they don't have much money to spend on food, which it's a bit weird to consider somebody dealing with food insecurity to be like tea or to want to share about it in a gossipy way as if to like invalidate their weight loss, probably to feel better about her own lack of weight loss, especially when she is very uh, upfront. You can just tell by the way that she lives that she has a lot of money. And if there's somebody that she knew that's dealing with food insecurity, she could help that person out, but she chooses not to. In the eyes of the audience, the person who has received most of Ember's mean girl treatment is her ex-girlfriend, Becky. She was the first of Ember's girlfriends to become financially dependent on her. Becky quit her job shortly after they started dating. Ember said she quit because the job was heavy physical labor, which hurt Becky's back. But people in the community speculate that Ember pushed Becky to quit her job so that she can be around all day to drive her wherever she wanted. Elle, let's not act as if you haven't mistreated Becky. We've both mistreated each other. I've never yes. denied, but there's never been like abuse or anything like that. We'll start this story with a timeline of Ember and Becky's relationship. On January 15th, 2017, Ember announced that she quit her job, partly because Destiny really wanted her to quit. And Destiny and I talked about it a lot. Um, she really wanted me to quit because she knows that I can do YouTube. She knows I make money from YouTube. Then 11 days later, she announced that Destiny broke up with her. Destiny broke up with me. Then 16 days after that, she announced that Destiny had a new girlfriend named Dana, whom they both used to work with. Due to this short timeline, people believe that Destiny cheated on Ember with Dana. The fact that Destiny already found someone else is, is hard for me. It, it really is. And um, we still have a really good friendship though. And I don't want to jeopardize that by like, I don't know. I just don't want to jeopardize that. And I want people to know that no, Destiny did not cheat on me. She was not talking to this girl while we were together like that. Not at all. We were actually all friends. So it's, it's definitely ironic that that's happened, but it is what it is. On Valentine's Day, one month after their breakup, Ember drank an entire bottle of wine and talked about still being in love with Destiny. <laughs> How do I forget these? Oh, if Destiny wanted me back, would I take her? in a heartbeat because um she's literally my everything and i feel like she'll always be my everything because i'm an unhealthy fucking bitch and i don't really know like she's doing me wrong i don't tell i don't tell i don't tell people um it's not something I want to talk about, but I feel like I've done wrong. Like, she's doing me wrong. And I feel like it's whatever, though, you know? You need to get the fuck over it. Like, that's just what I keep telling myself. Nothing's going to change. Like, she got a no new boo on her arm. I'm good. Um, <sighs> I don't know what other questions you asked. I'm so sorry. On May 7th, about four months after the breakup, Ember responded to leaked Instagram DMs of Dana trash-talking her. Basically saying that Ember is still clingy towards Destiny and would blow up Destiny's phone when she was hanging out with Dana. How do you feel about the conversation Dana, Dana had on Instagram that leaked out and is it true? I feel like this is going to be like 
hot topics. <laughs> like this is like the hot topic for me. Okay, so how do I feel about it? I'm shocked and I feel, um, I feel really sad. That's how I feel because I really thought me and her were friends. Um, and is it true? I want to say no, <laughs> it's not true. I've never been rude to her ever. I've never disrespected her. Um, the part about me calling Destiny a lot when they first got together, that is very true. Um, when Destiny first broke up with me, as I've told you guys before, I was a hot mess. I did not know how to be alone. I had attachment issues and it was bad. It was bad news and it's been five months. So hello, like five or four months, something like that. Like I've, I'm like a completely different person. Um, but I am very sad about that and I will be talking to Dana about that and I just really hope we can get it figured out and... On May 27th, 2017, Ember introduced Becky as her new girlfriend. The top comment under that video is someone comparing how Ember introduced Destiny versus Becky. With Destiny, she screamed, she's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Everything is perfect. I've never felt this way about anyone before. But with Becky, she barely remembered to tell the audience her name. So the reason why I didn't vlog yesterday is because we went to see... Okay, by the way, her name is Becky. Yeah, I know a lot of you like figure that out. I don't know how, but yeah, her name is Becky. So if you guys want to know, that's my girlfriend's name. This raises the first claim, which is that Ember did not love Becky. When Becky and Ember would go on double dates with Destiny and Dana, the audience felt like Ember was paying more attention to Destiny than Becky. Ember would buy gifts for Destiny for years after the breakup. A channel called Your Hippie Grandma posted a video comparing the gifts that Ember bought for Becky to those that she bought for Destiny. She got me a box with a bunch of different teas. And yeah, I mean, basically she just like, I know like it's not about like the amount of money you spend, but it's like she obviously spent so much more time, energy, and like actual money on Destiny's gifts. Like that one year that she spent with Destiny for Christmas there was definitely like, I'm certain more money than both Christmases for Becky combined. And that's like sad. <laughs> like, I really don't know what it was about Destiny for Amberlynn. I don't get it because Becky seems like this like genuine sweet, human destiny does not i don't get it why, why would you love bomb her like that like that is like the most insane thing i've like ever seen and i'm sure becky felt like trash because i'm sure she's seen it how could she not like going back and being like oh like she got so much more than me like triple the amount that i got like two years combined that's crazy all these behaviors led the audience to believe that ember was still in love with destiny for years ember denied the accusation that she was still in love with her ex that is until late 2020 when she admitted that she was in love with Destiny for the first one and a half years that she and Becky were dating. Why do people assume you're still in love with Destiny? Okay, so we're going to do a little tea spilling here and Destiny doesn't even know this. So I'm sure you guys will message her. So when I first got with Becky, I was very open about everything that I was feeling, what I've been through. That's just the type of person I am. I'm very transparent, especially if I'm fixing to be in a relationship. I wanna say probably upwards to a year, year and a half after Destiny and I broke up, I was still in love with her. I was able to separate that though from the love that I felt for Becky. I was also in love with Becky. And I know there's like this like thing where people like you can't be in love with two people at once you can like have you guys ever heard of sister wives like in february 2021 becky proposed to ember and the comment section found ember's engagement announcement to be less than enthusiastic welcome to a new video so we're just gonna do some makeup and i'm not a makeup guru um i don't know what i'm doing half the time i'm just kidding um i'm just gonna go for it do as i do and we're just gonna chit chat. So first thing we're using is Hard Candy Sheer Envy Stick It to Pores. This is a pore primer stick. So, hello, um, I'm engaged. So that is an actual situation. I <clears throat> am shook to the core. Um, it was so <laughs> special and 
it was totally Becky, the way she asked me. Um, we're keeping that private for now. <laughs> there are a few people who know, you know, close people. But... <laughs> oh my god, I love her so much. Four months into the engagement, Becky broke up with Amber. After the breakup, Amber was being very rude to Becky. And in one live stream, she said Becky should feel like shit for ending their relationship. She proposed to me and... <laughs> we were in love and we had some of our future planned so yeah she should feel like fucking utter shit for breaking my heart <laughs> but then a few weeks later amber revealed that they had fallen out of love long before the breakup and hadn't been having sex for the last three years of their four-year relationship becky and amber had broken up emotionally a long time ago Rosie, you couldn't have said it better. It was literally emotionally and physically. Like, I was going to say it. Oh, God. Okay, here's tea. I was going to say it um, last live stream, but I stopped myself. The last time Becky and I... <laughs> do I really want to say this? The last time Becky and I, um, you know, was February 2018. So take that with what you will. Um... So it's been years that I just literally felt like I wasn't even in a relationship. So now maybe you guys can understand now why I've moved on. So by this timeline, Emma and Becky stopped being intimate several months before she got over Destiny. Then Emma went on and said it was Becky's attitude that destroyed Emma's affection and their sex life. Do you think either of you are asexual no absolutely not i am not asexual at all um no i'm a very affectionate and sexual person and when i first got with becky i was that and becky even told you guys before in a live stream that um she like in the beginning she was very rude to me and like cold and like standoffish and stuff and it completely changed who i was as a person like i stopped being affectionate i stopped like i just stopped being myself like it was so weird and um yeah i'm definitely not asexual i'm a very sexual person when somebody asked Amber why she agreed to marry becky when she proposed Amber said that she felt trapped you weren't in love with her and you said yes. You accept the love that you think that you deserve. And I literally like felt like I was like trapped in a way. That knowledge shines a very negative light on all these other allegations of abuse in their relationship. There are two videos in which Becky mentioned that Amber got really mean when she wanted to binge on food. One was posted during their 2018 weight loss wars. In the video, Amber talks about how sometimes people infuriate her into overeating. And Becky responds that she feels like she's the one who infuriates Amber a lot. Amber tries to tell Becky to stop talking because people already think she abuses her. Okay. I think whenever I feel like, oh my god, everybody, like just looking at them makes me want to eat a hamburger. I feel like I'm just going to like go in my own I feel like seclusion I'm, and I feel like I make you feel that way a lot no no oh my god no that's depressing no you just I guess because we're around each other you know a lot I feel like we're you know side by side with all of our free time I just feel like you know you tend to stop by your head <laughs> You guys know how people think, relationships wait, <laughs> People think I abuse you already. She does not. God, I would never say with someone who was abusive toward me. That would never happen. Like, I've had family members that that's happened to. And I would never do so. I would never subject myself to that. There is a difference between... I mean, there is emotional abuse and physical abuse yeah that's people happening think, to both people think i emotionally abuse you the second one was a video in which amber asked becky to help her whenever she wanted to binge and becky was hesitant to say yes because amber Lynn gets really mean like i've talked to a lot of people and they think i should talk to you about like when like the binge monster comes like you do everything in your power to help me you know <laughs> I know. Tried. I know. It gets scary. It's hard. You get mean. But I'm not like mean abusive. Let's You're not abusive. <laughs> no, but you get mean and we've argued about it. Yeah. Which is very common. I've talked to some people and 
But really, like off a of camera, we should like talk. Amber had to address an incident in which she scolded Becky for eating cereal. Amber said she got angry at Becky because they were supposed to be dieting. You're abusive to Becky about food, like when you saw her eating your cereal. Okay, I am so glad we got this one because this is like a situation that like haunts me. So there was a clip in Eric's vlog that he filmed where Becky had a bowl of cereal and I was like, what are you doing with cereal? And I said it kind of quiet. So I'm gonna like give the backstory to the whole thing because I totally understand. Like if I was like in an outside perspective and I saw that, I'd be like, ew, Amberlynn is a freak when it comes to food. Like why is she acting like that? So I completely understand why people are like saying that because you don't know like the story involving it. So the night before that, Becky and I, we were crying talking about our weight, saying how when we wake up, we're gonna completely change the way we eat and we're gonna be healthy and we're gonna be like holding each other accountable, etc., etc. So when I walked out into the living room and I was walking into the dining room, I happened to see Becky with a bowl of cereal and I got so mad. I'm gonna be honest. I got mad because, you guys, this was like over a year ago though, so don't like, I'm not like spilling too much pipe and tea right now, but um, I got mad because we were supposed to wake up and we were gonna do this together. We were gonna support each other and stuff like that. So when I saw her eating cereal, I asked her, why are you eating cereal? Because I was like truly upset about that. And you can tell when I walk away that I was upset. And I was also upset that Eric was vlogging it because it was like a very personal moment and I just didn't really wanna be like whatever in it. I think that's the only time ever I've never wanted to be filmed. Also, during their 2018 weight loss wars, Amber admitted that she got angry when Becky didn't want to drive her to get binging food. Trust me, I feel guilty for binging because it's not me when I'm binging. Like Becky has been there when I binge and she tries to help me. Sorry. I'm like, I get mad. I got mad because obviously I don't drive. And I don't even know if this is something I wanna be honest about, but it's like, I just get very angry if I don't get my way during a binge and I feel like I'm being possessed by somebody because it's not who I am. In 2019, the audience noticed that Becky constantly looked like she was in a zombie state. And after the breakup, Becky posted a video reflecting on his state of mind during this time. This is <clears throat> my 29th birthday. And I don't remember anything about it. I don't remember any of it. Uh, this is whenever I was on... Um, a depression medicine, a mood stabilizer, anxiety medicine. Um, I was, <clears throat> I was misdiagnosed with bipolar type two and was taking uh, an array of medicine trying to figure out what's going on with me. Um, and in turn, it pretty much turned me into a zombie. I don't remember anything about this. I don't know if you watched any of my ex's uh, videos, um, but a lot of people knew how I was acting really weird. They thought, I, I mean, it's untelling what people thought, honestly, but I was zombied out of my head and I moved very slowly but I absolutely look like crap. As you can see, I was not taking care of myself. Um, being forced out of bed was the only way I was living. Was the only way I was even existing. I was on absolute autopilot. I'm just saying, look at that look in my eye. I'm going to be honest, I wasn't there. During the depressive episode, people were concerned about Ember making Becky drive her to Walmart and restaurants multiple times a week. Mm -hmm. 
it smells really good. <laughs> yeah. I have to agree. Oof. There's something just so depressing about Becky. Like, it... She used to have so much more personality, and now it's just, it's gone. Like, it's just, she's so blah now. Like, what happened? She should not be driving. I, I'm going to just put that out there. I don't think she should be driving, especially with Amber in the car vlogging with no seatbelt on. She just doesn't seem there. Amber said Becky was fine to drive. Should Becky be driving in her condition? So I know a lot of people care about becky and i know some people just like the entertainment of like oh what's wrong with becky is she on benzos like what no becky is totally okay to drive she's okay to cook she's okay to do literally anything the depression isn't the only instance of ember saying becky is fine when she's clearly not on their anniversary in 2018, Becky was really sick and Ember wanted to go grocery shopping. She told Becky her fever wasn't that bad. She has a sinus infection. Uh, low grade fever right now. What, what is it? Uh, I think it was 99.4. I mean, that's not too bad. It's not too bad, but you know, usually it goes out from there. Yeah. Okay. I run normally at 97. 97 is your normal range? Mm -hmm. Do you take your medicine today? Mm -hmm. All of them? Good. In the same video, Ember also showed a hamper of laundry that Becky needed to put away while Becky was coughing in the background. People criticized Amber for not helping her clearly sick girlfriend by at least putting away the laundry as a gesture of love on their anniversary. She uses her sexuality to attack her girlfriend. So I, I don't really get how, I don't understand if she has fans really, but you know, in the, one of her last vlogs, you could clearly see Becky was upset that um, Amber would even suggest the fact that she may be attracted to a boy or a man. And instead of really understanding where her partner was coming from, she continued to poke at her and tease her. And you could clearly see that Becky was upset about it and she was bothered. The other thing people commented on was the way Amber would film Becky. I always call it Yamato's. It's called Yamato. God, dude, I would get so over my partner constantly shoving a camera in my face. It would get so fucking old. They're like the most unflattering shots of me, too. Like, it would just be... I, sometimes I wonder if, like, this is Amber's passive-aggressive way of making Becky feel like shit by making her look like shit on camera. Like, I honestly feel that way sometimes because I just... I don't know. I wouldn't want to post this shit of my partner. Like, that's not a great angle of her. This isn't a great shot of her. In one video, Becky asked Ember to cut out something embarrassing, but she left it in the video. Hey. What are you doing? Something embarrassing. What's embarrassing? Just cut this out. People felt Ember displayed a general lack of empathy towards Becky. This is something that Ember is accused of in all her relationships. I'll discuss it in more detail in part three. But Ember's lack of empathy was most pronounced when Becky's mother got diagnosed with cancer and later passed away. In September 2019, a friend of Becky's mother named Annie sent a message to reaction channels trashing Ember for not financially supporting Becky's mother during her cancer treatment journey. The message read in part, she in the message is Emberlyn Reed, and it reads, Hi Michael, my name is Annie. I'm Becky's mom's very best friend. I want to make something very clear. She's trying to bring all the attention to herself, as always, as we should all already know. Becky's mother has breast cancer, and no, she does not help at all. We are making a GoFundMe page for Becky's mom to help her with her journey with breast cancer. The next sentence is very difficult to understand, but I think it's supposed to be, we asked Ember to help and she gave $100 to help with the hotel stay. But the drive to the hospital for surgery was a seven hour drive, plus they had to stay two nights and no Ember did not go. And now she, Becky's mom, has to have another surgery this week because they did not get all the cancer. And the bitch is worried about uploading some dumbass videos just because she's money hungry. Um, so here's the timeline of how things went down in my world. Um, 
we were pumping out videos, right? We were putting out videos and apparently a woman by the name of Anne or Annie was commenting on people's on reaction channels saying Amberlyn isn't helping out at all when it comes to Becky's mom having cancer. Um, Amberlyn's a selfish little brat, blah, blah, blah. Um, we need to help her. All this stuff, right? We were getting all of these different um this woman was basically coming out and just like letting her letting her have it then becky's mother's friend released the voice messages between amber and becky's mother in one of the voice notes becky's mother calls amber out for not contacting her to offer supportive words after she was diagnosed with cancer you have not once called me and said norma i am so sorry that you have cancer. I am so sorry that you had to go through this. Not once have you ever said that to me. Not once. Becky's mother passed away in 2020, and when Becky went out to pick a headstone for her mother's grave, Amber sat in the car. Hello everyone, um, we just dropped off some trash, and we are headed about two hours from here to my family to um, finally pick out a headstone for my mom's uh, grave. And then we have to go back to her house and go through her things, which I haven't been there since the funeral. And it's gonna be extremely difficult but I think I'll be okay. So Becky and her sisters and um, her mom's lifelong partner are across the street um, looking at headstones and I'm just feeling sort of emotional. I just, Becky's mom was her absolute best friend and I just wanna be there for her. And out of respect, I didn't obviously go over there. Um, I just felt like, you know, yes, I'm part of the family, but I felt like it should be him and the three daughters. Um, I just, I just got done crying a little bit and like, I don't know, I miss her, you know? In 2020, about a year before Amber and Becky broke up, Amber was diagnosed with uterine cancer. She got a hysterectomy and recovered under Becky's care. Then after they broke up, Amber compared Becky to a new girlfriend during an Instagram Q&A. Someone asked Amber if she thought her cancer journey would have been different if she was with her new girlfriend, and Amber responded, I would have went to the doctor sooner. I wouldn't have ever waited till I was bleeding to death to be rushed to the ER. Then a follow-up question asked if Amber was insinuating that it was Becky's fault that she didn't go to the doctor sooner. And Amber responded, She didn't seem concerned, which made it to where I was less concerned than I should have been. I'm pretty sure we talked about this on live stream, but she didn't even want to take me to the ER the night I was bleeding to death. She admits that it was wrong of her and I accepted her apology and I hold zero resentment. But my girlfriend now would have literally forced me into the gynecology office even if I was bleeding for more than two months, let alone almost three years. Sometimes your surroundings and environment play a big role in situations like this. Just remember to advocate for yourself because I didn't till I finally did and it was almost too late. It's up to you to save yourself, no one else. People in the Amberverse were outraged and saw this as Amber blaming Becky for her cancer. This is a response from a reaction channel called Orange Queen. Now this is wrong on so many levels. She is basically blaming Becky for what happened. Amberlyn is full of shit. She herself admitted that she never went to a gynecologist before that night, so I don't know why she is blaming Becky for this. We get that you never love Becky, and you were thinking of Dusty the whole relationship, but you don't have to blame her for you being irresponsible. You are a grown-ass woman and you should take some accountability. If Becky refused to take you, why didn't you take an Uber? Becky also released a response on her channel, basically saying that Amber was the one who resisted going to the doctor. Are you going to respond to Amber's claims that you didn't take her bleeding seriously? 
Everyone took it seriously. She didn't listen to any of us. She's the one who let fear get in the way. There's no making her do anything not even her current partner. I'm tired of talking about her and I want to move on. That night she went to the uh, year at first I didn't take her seriously because everyone knows how she is, she herself has said she has been a hypochondriac. As soon as I realized how bad it was which was literally like 20 minutes after she even asked to go, I was all for it because it truly was the scariest thing to have witnessed what I did that night. If only she wouldn't have ignored people who actually cared about her. I have a handful and a half of people who also told her she needed to go to the gynecologist. The reason I have not said anything is first off I want to be completely done with that part of my life. It's the past and does nothing for my present or future. In the last few months of their relationship, Ember was struggling with anxiety and couldn't film videos or live streams on her own. So Becky became Amber's co-host and Amber said she was paying Becky a fair share of income from the live streams. This is the most awk live stream I've ever seen. Becky's in a weird headspace, but no, I'm this is her job something. now. I'm doing something. Y'all, I pay her monthly now. I'm doing something. I pay. I'm proud of myself and I'm proud of her. It is what it is. She helped me with this. Like, it, honestly, hands down, if it wasn't for Becky, I don't know if I could continue live streams. Like... She honestly helps me. Like, it feels like a comfort thing, too. And I don't get as much anxiety, and I'm able to, like, take breaths, and, like... So she helps me a lot, and she deserves to be paid. But when they broke up, Becky said she did not have any money and set up a GoFundMe to help with her expenses. Zachary Michael thought it didn't add up for Becky to be broke given the estimated income from the live streams. But Becky does cover that in, in the apology video saying like, yes, Amberlynn was paying me for participating in the live streams, but a lot of that was like going to directly to like rent and bills and I only somehow got like $300. Or something like that. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing what Becky said. And I had to say, that doesn't, like, listen. You want me to get out the calculator? You want me to get out the calculator? This shit's not adding up. I just, got, I just gotta be honest with you. Now, I mean, it's really hard to say how much... Amberlynn made without fully seeing all of Amberlynn's analytics and whoever, whatever. But let's just, let's just focus on the live streams because that's what Amberlynn was allegedly like splitting with Amberlynn because as you recall, Amberlynn couldn't do a live stream without Becky being there and made Becky be there even post breakup, right? Uh, which is weird because uh, apparently now Amberlynn has no problem live streaming completely on her own, but, but that's neither here nor there. If you just look at those live streams, I would guess based on the number of views that Amberlynn gets on those live streams, that even without Super Chats, okay, even without Super Chats, I would guess... And again, this is a guess, but I would guess she makes probably somewhere like $900 to $1,000 per live stream. So if you are thinking about how she's doing that twice a week for a whole month because you get paid monthly by YouTube, okay? If you think about how she's doing that twice a week for a whole month, then easily just on live stream, she's probably making $8,000. And then I also did see a comment on Becky's video that said something about in the Discord, it was revealed that Amberlynn made $8,000. So I feel like, I, I don't know what the truth of that comment was, but just like me guesstimating, okay, guesstimating based on how much I would guess that YouTube is paying her, she probably made $8,000 a month in just live streams, okay? So tell me, how half of that, half of that would be $4,000. Tell me how Becky's, just Becky's half of rent, utilities, whoever, whatever, costs $4,000. Like, like that shit is not adding up. I live in Chicago and if you add up my rent and my utilities and my everything alone, if I'm just paying that on my own, that's not $4,000. If I'm paying that for me and all, that's not $4,000. You live in, in Kentucky, girl. <laughs> like, what? But honestly, though, I think the bigger gag for me is probably just Amberlynn in general. Especially considering how many times while Amberlynn was dating Becky, Amberlynn helped 
pay for things for Destiny and Dana, like their rent, but also we saw her do like toiletry hauls for them where she bought them toiletries, which I think is great. I think it's great to help out friends, but then you're telling me you'll help out that particular ex, but in Becky like transitioning to live on their own, you can't, you can't, you can't do anything to help with that. Like that, that part doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The final drama that would involve Becky and Ember was a saga about their engagement rings. I'm not going to go into all the convoluted details. Here's a quick summary. When Becky proposed, Ember told her audience that Becky paid for the rings. When Becky broke up with Ember, Ember said she was going to flush the engagement rings down the toilet. I'm getting rid of the engagement ring. I was thinking about just flushing it down the toilet. I blame you. <laughs> she then changed her mind and gave them back to Becky, who then listed them on Facebook Marketplace for $200 with a shady caption which partly read, Belly won rings. Why do I have two? High maintenance ex fiance. <clears throat> then, from what I understand, Becky found out that the actual value of the rings was cheaper than what was listed. So she took down the listing and returned the rings to Amber. Amber then revealed that she was the one who initially paid for the rings. Amber then listed the rings on her Instagram for $350. One of Amber's fans bought the rings. Nonetheless, I saw the Instagram post. Um, it happened to be a day because the way I budget, um, long story short of it, I ended up having some extra cash. I saw on Instagram, Amberlynn had made a post and with my husband's blessing, I reached out. I told her, you know, I. It, I said I'm a fan. If Amber ever sees this, was I'm, I was heartfelt and I mean it. I 100% want the best for you. 100% I'm grateful that you're willing to sell your rings. I mean, it, it, it could, it's a very sentimental thing. I just wanted to have them, like I said, as a momentum to this season of life where things are crazy in the real world. And this was a form of entertainment for me. And just like that, the symbol of Amber and Becky's love was sold off to a random man on the internet. A fitting end to this relationship that seems to have meant nothing to Amber. Before we get into Amber's alleged scams, let's quickly go over her reputation as a public nuisance. When she started dating Destiny, they became Walmart frequenters, and their favorite activity at Walmart was riding the mobility scooters. On one particular day, they brought their 15-year-old friend to race scooters in the parking lot. <laughs> We're racing literally right now. We just left Destiny Hardcore. We did. It was like, okay, you pay for this. We're going to leave. Bye. <laughs> then Amber had to issue an apology for saying fuck Walmart. Fuck you, Walmart. I want you guys to know, like, I felt kind of weird last night. I did say fuck you, Walmart, in my vlog last night. And my personality is very, you know, just... I don't know, you guys would have to know me in person to understand that. Like, I legitimately don't mean fuck you, Walmart. I was totally joking. I kind of just wanted to clarify I shouldn't have to, but a lot of people take things personally, which I understand. Then in 2016, she confessed that she once visited a hospital lobby just to sit around and play Pokemon Go. Um, <laughs> this one's kind of funny, but I went to a hospital. I sat in the lobby of the hospital. And this is when Pokemon Go was super popular. And I sat there and I played Pokemon Go. Yeah, that's kind of shitty. Like, what? Like, no, Amberlynn. That was when I was, like, obsessed with it. When she was dating Becky, her Walmart shenanigans evolved from racing scooters to touching everything. She also filmed the elderly residents in a facility where she worked in 2015. In one instance, she recorded a conversation with the resident while the resident was trying to go to the bathroom. Right now, I'm currently at work. I'm getting a resident ready for bed. She's in the restroom right now. Um, what are you doing? I'm getting the What are you doing with all those things? Huh? What are you doing with all those bags? Just put them back in the trash, okay? See, with some residents, um, they have to do certain things by themselves. With this one, I helped her get dressed and stuff like that, but I can't help her in the bathroom. But anyways, that's not what I was trying to say. She would also film her colleagues who clearly didn't want to be on camera. From behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. 
Whatever you're doing, quit. One of her work friends had just given birth and Amber started recording her before she asked for consent. I make YouTube videos. You don't mind your cute no, son. No, no, no. I'm only be like, <laughs> I want your him. You don't mind your kid on YouTube. <laughs> Over the years, she also included other people's young children in her videos. Michael B. Petty called out Amber for hypocrisy when she called somebody creepy for filming her outside the vet's office. I just think it's just the height of hypocrisy that now if someone films in public, it's illegal now. When that is her entire brand is filming people without their consent in nursing homes, people's children, in Walmarts, Aunt Costa Grande. I mean, hell, an entire meme was born out of you filming people without their knowledge in public right the entire beanbag in a hurry meme was created joke everything was created out of you filming people without their consent so i just think that it's really interesting to me how now when that happens to you a public vlogger a vlogger that goes into public is now going to cry boo it's ridiculous a big part of this is the whole scamming situation Nothing about what me and Becky said in the video we uploaded was a scam. In this final section, let's go over the two scams that Emberlyn Reed is accused of. The first controversy was in 2018. Emberlyn did a $50 gift card giveaway to celebrate 50,000 subscribers. She posted on her Instagram that she would select a winner from people who followed her, answered three questions about their engagement with her channel, and why they deserve to win. Shortly after, she announced on her Snapchat that she has selected the winner and got emotional over a story that the winner had shared with her. So I have officially chosen a winner for um, the giveaway and I just got done crying. I am literally such a baby, but um, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for so many entries and you guys are so sweet and kind. And, um, the person I chose is just going through a really hard time right now and that's why I'm crying. Um, their comment just really touched me and I already contacted him and um, I really hope that I can help him in this time. And two weeks later, someone named JB left a comment on Emberlyn's video saying he was the winner but had not received the gift card. JB kept sending DMs to Emberlyn on Instagram but Ember insisted that she sent the gift card to JB via post office and then suggested that maybe JB was a troll. The question is, did you scam one of your subscribers out of a gift card? I've actually talked about this before and I said, like, I'm literally not going to talk about this again. I sent a $50 gift card to the giveaway winner and they said they did not receive it. So I feel like it might be the other way around that maybe they're scamming me. Um... Becky brought to my attention, are you sure that this person wasn't initially a hater to begin with and this was their plan all along? And that breaks my heart if that's the truth. Um, another thing that could have happened was it could have been lost in the mail. So they might have literally not gotten it, but we have no idea because there was no receipts. Obviously, you don't get a receipt when you put something in the mail. So, um... No, I did not scam them. That's horrible. I hate that people think I am that type of person. I am not a degrading, horrible person. JB then contacted one of the reaction channels, CXNT, and shared the message he had received from Amber telling him he won. And the follow-up DMs he sent to Amber about not receiving the gift card. So this is a conversation I had with JB over Instagram. I edited the recording to take out some personal information and show you the screenshots he sent me more clearly. Surprisingly, he reached out to me over Twitter and I went and found his Instagram to make sure that it's actually the guy who won the gift way. CXNT, Michael B. Petty and others organized a GoFundMe and raised $200 to send to JB. Our friend Skank Hunt, um, she actually, uh, got in contact with the person who was supposed to receive the go the not the go me, the gift card from Amberlynn because the dude lost his sister like it was really sad the story remember Amber, she made a video about it mm -hmm. she made a video talking about how she felt so bad yeah and, and that's why she chose him because because mm -hmm. of his story and it was so hard and she really right. felt for him 
And then the guy never got his card and was tr like in the comments of her YouTube video being like, it's been two weeks. Like what the, like, like what's going on? Like I was really hoping for this money, like blah, blah, blah. And so our friend took it upon herself to make a GoFundMe. And I think, what did we raise? Like a hundred and something dollars? Over 200. Over 200 bucks. And then we sent him the card and he like took a picture of like, thank you. Like, I'm so like, you guys are so nice. Like Amber portrays you guys to be like these awful people, but like, really, you know, you guys have a heart, blah, blah, blah. And it was just like, it wasn't even that hard. And then when we called her out about it, she was like, well, when you go to the post office, they don't give you a receipt, bitch. All you got to do is ask. Amberlyn Reed is begging her audience for money, both on a GoFundMe fundraiser, as well as asking everybody to watch the ads in her videos and to click those ads. Now, there's a lot of skepticism surrounding this, and we're going to be looking into if Amberlyn Reed is scamming her audience today. The second scandal was a $6,000 GoFundMe for Becky's mother, Norma, in September 2019. According to Becky, she was not planning to tell the internet about her mother's breast cancer diagnosis or that there was a GoFundMe until her mom's friend, Annie, started sending messages to reaction channels to trash Amber about not supporting Norma. Amber Lynn, um, is this GoFundMe? Is this Becky's mom? If this is Becky's mom, why haven't you shared this? Like, what are you waiting for? Is that why you haven't uploaded today? Hey, girls, I just wanted to update you all on some possible tea going around uh with amber lynn uh some something that's really weird weird enough to make me want to make a video so this woman uh annie Dor doran is saying that she's becky's mom's best friend and that becky's mom um has uh, cancer and so this this is a public comment so i'm not this isn't i didn't dig up anything private this is out there um and uh, her, she has cancer and she's incurring costs from the travel to go to the treatments like you know to take the family and stay overnight in a hotel because you know they can't drive that far or, you know, just things like that that come up uh and basically this lady is saying that amber lynn won't share won't share the fundraiser uh and that she gave a hundred dollars towards it which if amber lynn shared a fundraiser she would raise so much money for Becky's mom. I mean, if she like confirmed this is real, like this is a real deal. Um, so that that was weird. Then Emma and Becky made a video titled "The Truth," which has since been deleted from Emma's channel. Now there has been an enormous amount of negativity about Amberlyn surrounding it because because of a certain person decided to get on there and share, which. Um, I know my mom is okay with now. It was my choice not to share it. And now that is it is out, I'm asking for, you know, help on this GoFundMe. It was set up by my sister. And the expenses are ridiculous. We don't know if my mom's insurance will pay for the chemo um the gas back and forth is going to be outrageous um me and amberlyn have helped and we will continue to help and the proceeds from this video all of all of whatever we make off this video is going to go straight to my mother i'm just asking from the bottom of my heart that you donate anything you can, even if it's a dollar. Um, and I request, please, because we've been on the GoFundMe and people are bringing personal opinions about me or whatever it is into this. This is about Becky's mom. It's not about anything else. So her family, and us, we have requested just kind of leave that out of it because this is currently, we're trying to have as little stress as possible regarding this. The main point of contention with this GoFundMe is what the money was going to be used for. In the video, Becky said they were not sure if health insurance was going to cover Norma's cancer treatment and then also talked about the expenses of traveling to the cancer treatment center, which she said was about two and a half hours away. 
but Annie had said it was seven hours away. Then another person inserted herself into this. This person went on Kiwi Farms and claimed that she was an ex-wife of Norma's husband, Jerry. Apparently the person was verified by Kiwi Farms and she shared that Jerry was an ex-military and his health insurance did cover cancer treatment for spouses, which meant that Norma didn't need to set up a GoFundMe for her treatment. People then accused Becky's family of scamming and Amber was dragged in for promoting the scam to her audience. I've noticed that people only want to believe the things that are more entertaining, the, the things that are drama filled or like the tea, and that's just not reality. It's not reality at all. Most of the things that you hear online is not true. A big part of this is the whole scamming situation. Nothing about what me and Becky said in the video we uploaded was a scam. Everything that was relayed to me to say in that video was what I was told to say in that video. You know, it's just like there are people who are literally saying Becky's mom doesn't even have cancer. That's insane. Becky's sister then clarified on Twitter that the GoFundMe was meant to cover gas and hotel stays when they traveled for treatment in this faraway town that is either two or seven hours away. Uh, oh yeah, this is my favorite thing. That this is the newest update. There isn't ev evidence. There isn't any evidence against my mom or Amberlynn. Not sure where they are getting falsely inform informed. But the police are involved now because we reported Kiwi Farms, his ex, and a few others. We aren't worried. I never said for medical. That's what fucking idiots don't understand. We were asking for help. For, we were asking for money to help with gas and hotel stays. So I'm not sure where this scam is. And my mother has no income at all. So people can keep believing a cycle while we are here in the real South know how while we here in the real south know how to handle things this got people more aggravated because ember and becky frequently drove two hours into the next town to eat at restaurants so they could clearly afford gas people are talking about the fact that three women are begging for money when they haven't had a job in years and you're sitting on here making money from mukbangs and you're making like fifteen thousand dollars a month bragging about your louis vuitton purse that you want to get and stuff and you're on here begging for gas money after you just drove three hours to cheesecake factory the other day like this is crazy yo this is this is complete this is the deflection this is a deflection so there you go all the major reasons people cite for hating Emberlyn Reed. In part two, I will cover Emberlyn Reed's weight loss journey and why people are frustrated with her over her lack of progress. Until then, thank you for watching. If you watch this video, I am guessing you might also be interested in checking out this deep dive that I did on Foodie Beauty about her toxic relationship with Nada. Again, thank you for watching. Bye.